Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life, and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Yard down. For those of y'all new to my page, in 1994, I got arrested. I was sentenced to 16 years plus life, and I ended up serving 24 years straight in the California prison system. During those times, I accumulated some good stories. I met some good people. Uh Related to prison, and uh, we're going to do an interview with you guys today. In the event you happen to like the interview, you already know what it is, man. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and uh, hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you'll be notified, and you can hop on it ASAP, man. Uh, with that being said, let's hop right up into the interview, man. Today, uh, we got uh, Chris uh, coming through. Um, so Chris did a lot of time. You know, a lot of times you guys have asked me, how does um, people who don't join gangs, how do they fare in the California prison system? Well, Chris has a very unique story, uh, so I'm glad to have him on. So he's going to share a little bit about that with y'all today. So, uh, Chris, if you don't mind, you tell, tell us uh, where you from. Oh, hell, I'm from um, I'm from Southern California. I'm from the, the north of it, though. I'm from Santa Clarita Valley is where I went to high school at. I was born in San Fernando Valley, but I moved up here when I was like a teenager. So that's where I'm from. Right. So those of you guys out there not familiar with the area that he's describing, San Fernando Valley is about how far from L.A.? Uh, well, Santa Clarita Valley is about 30 miles from L.A. Um, it's the valley on top of the valley. So San Fernando Valley got, you know, uh, places like. Um, hell, Granada Hills, Calabasas, um, Northridge, Van Nuys, Sherman Oaks. All that type of deal. And then the valley on top of that valley is Santa Clarita Valley. It got Magic Mountain. That's where I'm oh, from, okay. around Magic so, Mountain. So, if anybody knows Southern California, it's where Wayside, the other part of the L.A. County Jail, is at. <laughs> right. So it's definitely it's definitely not uh, inner city living. No, it's the suburbs. Okay. And so basically you just you grew up there? Yeah. So what was what was like growing up? What was that like for you? Um. Well, hell, um, you got to deal with a lot of racism a little bit. Um. But other than that, I mean, there's not too many gangs out here. Uh, most of them are Hispanic gangs. Um, the black folks that do stay out here, like when I was growing up, there was pretty much well to do. I wasn't. I grew up in a mobile home park. We was poor. My mom just wanted me to go to good schools and she didn't want me to join any gangs. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a there's a gang of police out here. There's a 30 second response time. But yeah, people don't typically people don't typically get, get shot. There's there's a little bit of activity but this this place was listed as like top one of the top 15 safest places in america when i was growing up but being a black like a, a young black male growing up here i had to deal with the police since i was 12 years old so um i got pulled over for jaywalking when i first moved out here it tripped me out because jaywalking where i was at was nothing maybe right. i was 13 but um i walked across the street and the cop pulled me over <laughs> And they had my hands on the hood of the car. Another cop car pulled up with some more police. And they talked to me for like 30 minutes about me not being from around here and jaywalking is serious. And that was my introduction to the that particular part of this area. But so basically just basically just harassing you, huh? Yeah. Uh, the police don't have much to do out here. So, you know, um, they also don't get checked in a, in a lot of ways. So they just pretty much do whatever the hell they want to do. Um, and I got I found out about that a little bit. But. Um, I didn't know jaywalking was that damn serious. Like it wasn't nothing where I was at. So I guess I'm like, damn, y'all gonna pull up deep like that for some jaywalking? I'm like a kid for real. Um, but you know, I played sports and things like that, and so you know, I just, I guess you know, you adapt. You learn how to deal with stuff. You know, you um, I got in a lot of fights over racism though. A, a lot of that. Um, so so growing up out there where you where you grew up at, where what was the problem? It, it wasn't a lot of blacks out there. No, no, there wasn't a lot of blacks. There wasn't, a, it was predominantly white. Like where I was at, it was like, you know, there was a mixture out uh -huh. here. It was like mostly white folks. Um, right. And so there was like white supremacist groups um, and, and and things like that, which was like, which was new to me, you know, but like um, there were still pockets of like, like, like culture. Most of the black people out here were connected to Los Angeles in some type of way. Uh -huh. So there's always like, there's always some movement. People are going down to the Valley and things like that. When you get, you know, when you get your license in your car, and of course, if you play in sports, everybody loves you, you know, especially if you're good. So there's a lot of dudes, a lot of brothers out here that ended up in the in NFL and things like that, going to play college ball. But there's still that element, like when you're young and you're trying to figure out your place and things, like 
there's little packs and there was no real black gang. Like there's dudes, we kicked it like groups of us as, as, as black folks, but um, we didn't consider ourselves a gang or nothing like that. So, you know? so what was your, what was your high school years like? Um, football mainly. Um, I was feeling, I did terrible in school. Like, I don't think I got a 2.0 the whole time from junior high up to, to graduation. Matter of fact, I didn't even graduate high school. Um, I had to go to adult school and all that afterwards in order to graduate. But, um, yeah, high school was just for me as a, I mean, on a personal tip, it was just socializing for me. It wasn't a place to like go and learn. It was like for me to socialize and hang did, out. Did that have anything to do with the racism or you just was one of those individuals who didn't just, you know, you didn't care, care much for school? Uh, I just like, I just wasn't going to put extra effort into it. So if I'm yeah. in the class, I'll participate. But any type of thing to do outside the class, like I never took the SATs, never studied for anything, never did really homework or anything like that. Um, but in class, I was cool. But a lot of times I would ditch class to go hang out in another, in another class. I don't know how I was even allowed to play football, to be honest with you, because yeah. <laughs> I think I would have like my progress report would be decent, you know what I'm saying, enough to stay playing. But then by the time the final, it was it, it was a trip. But um. But the, you got to understand, like, the racist thing, like, w- like through junior high, once I got introduced to the attitudes of it, like, my response to all that was, like, straight up anger. Oh. Um, and so, like, through high school years, you know, you willing to fight, you showing aggression, like, that was the stance. So it was like, I know where y'all kick it at. I know where y'all at. Do not mess with me or mine. And that was, like, just the way it went down. And if, they, if there was some tension, then we just going to get it cracking. And it was what it was. You know, um, but it's usually fist fight stuff. So, so after high school, uh, what did you know? What did life look like? What did you start doing? Um, after high school, like I was kind of embarrassed that I didn't graduate because it, like, I should have known it was gonna happen, but it kind of caught me off guard because I was going to summer school every year. So even though I get F's, I go to summer school and make up for it. Um, senior year, um, I didn't like pass a foods class or something like that. Like I wasn't able to go across stage. And I was hella embarrassed and I just disappeared for a little while. All my friends that I was close to signed up for the military. I wasn't really with that. So um, when people were going to Cancun and all this type of stuff to celebrate graduating, I just like disappeared. Uh-huh. Um, I tried to sign up for college after adult school. So I graduated um, like three months later because I had to do adult school and things like that. So I signed up for college for that fall semester. And I don't know what I was thinking if I wasn't disciplined in school. I don't know what the hell I was going to think I was going to do in college. And so I quickly dropped out of that. Um, stopped showing up. And then I just started getting jobs because I wanted money. And so I started working at like, um, I was always able to, you know, I was raised a certain way. So I knew how to like do the job interviews and, and right. resumes and things like that. So I got jobs. I was working for like Sprint, Verizon, selling cell phones and things like that. But it was just, it was just never enough. Uh-huh. Um, it was, it was never enough. And then uh, I ended up getting a job at, um, at Wells Fargo. I became a banker at Wells Fargo, an entry level banker. And uh, okay. they had big dreams for me and things like that. Um, and so that was a pretty decent job, right? Because like you said, it had a, a it had a lot of potential uh, benefits in the, in the future and advancements. Yeah, I was 21 at the time. Um, 20 when I started working there. So I was 20. I turned 21 while I was there. Um, yeah, but I wasn't. I was really a short term thinker, so I wasn't really thinking long term. Um, I was treating that job. You understand, like I bought if I wasn't out there, if there was a gang, I would have been in it. I bought into all the ideas that went into a a certain type of showing up as a man. Like, Uh you know, you had to be willing to fight. You had to like, you know, basically be, you know, you couldn't be soft with women. You had to, you know, you know, dominate pretty much. And then you had um, and then I had to pursue money like all that and and, and look, look, look like I had money. All that was really how I was operating. So these jobs were just. I wasn't treating them like careers. And so when I got a job at the bank, I was showing up at the bank like I was really about the career. I learned everything um, and they were trying to, you know, give me my licenses to go and become an investment banker or whatever the case may be. And um, I just saw that as hella responsibility because the minute I clocked out, I was not thinking about banking. (laughs) I'm back hanging Mm -hmm. out with the homies and we, you know, it's about what's happening Friday and Saturday. Like you basically just you just playing the part pretty much as far as as far as the job is concerned. Exactly. Like it was about the paycheck. Um, and then the paycheck wasn't enough. I wasn't really thinking. Um, matter of fact, the responsibility that they were putting on me is one of the reasons why I ended up trying to quit because it just seemed like um, I didn't have the I had a, a lot of mental shifts when I went to prison. I didn't I, I was um, I didn't really like effort 
effort seemed like something that people that aren't capable needed to needed to, you know, to use. So I felt like if I had to try hard, that meant that I wasn't naturally good at it. And I didn't want nobody to see that. It was like a real perfectionist type of deal going on. So if anything seemed like it was a challenge, like I was going to look stupid doing it, I really didn't try to do it, which was a weakness for me. You feel me? Right. And so what yeah. are what are some of the tasks that that the bank was trying to put on you that you felt, oh, this is just like a little bit much. Cause like, we got to keep in mind though, too, at that time, you're young, you know, 21 is still relatively young. And when we don't have these type of um, father figures or people in our lives, that's given us these certain type of um, work ethics and things like, and th of that nature, like you say, we'll tend to start getting our information from the homies, dudes in the street. And we're not thinking right. So what was some of the, some of the tasks that they was trying to ask you to do that you felt was, ah, oh, I'm not, it's a little bit too much. It really wasn't the task. It was the responsibility of like driving something myself. So like task oriented jobs were like simple, you know, um, you know, do this, do it this particular way. I could do that all day. But when you when you had to think and strategize on your own to reach a particular benchmark, that's when I was like, OK, um, I just didn't want to put effort into thinking like that, you know, um, I had all kinds of justifications. I'm making money for y'all, all this type of stuff. I really don't want to be here, but I need the money at the same time. So I was trying to do the absolute bare minimum. You know, um, this is a terrible really way to think about it, to be honest with you. Um, so when they were like talking about the, my future there, like, oh, you could be a business banker, you can go into management, you can be an investment banker. What do you want to do? You know, um, you're, you're, you're going to be one of us. You're going to, you know, all these types of things. I was just looking like, man, that's a hell of a lot of years. And that just seems like a lot of responsibility. I'm going to drop the ball. Like somehow I'm going to fail. And I was like, kind of, I was terrified of that really. I wouldn't have used that word back then, but I was like scared of failing. Like um, yeah. then everybody's going to look at me like, oh, this dude isn't what we thought he was. Cause I came in there with a great first impression, but like upholding that was like effort and work. And I'm trying to, I'm basically using the math to try to cover up the fact that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like right. I really don't know what I'm doing. Were you making relatively good money at that time? Uh, no, I look like it. Um, I'm wearing, you know, I'm wearing suits to work. But no, like um, I think I started at like for a 21 year old, maybe I was like making, you know, it's like there's commission in hourly. So like it's 2004. Um, I think I was making like 40,000 a year, something like that. You know, that's not yeah, um, that's not too bad for a 21 year old. No, you know, it's crazy because I worked at I was working in sales for a while. So I worked at Verizon, too. I made more money than that working at Verizon, you know, these companies, they put me up in places like for a hotel for like a month to train me on their campus and all this type of stuff. So like they gave me like the customer service skills. Like I, I learned a lot. It's just that I was only there for the money. I wasn't there for any type of mission or cause or anything like that. And I was really more preoccupied with like showing up, um, like being valuable to the, you know, to the to the culture that I thought I was a part of. Like, so that's what mattered to me more than actually having a career. I really was jacked up. I was the only child, I raised the only child. My mom, you know, is going to work all day and all night. So I'm really like, you know, I'm only seeing my mom like two hours a day. So I'm like really just running around trying to figure this out on my own, you know? And so when I, once I bought into that culture of that particular style of like manhood, that's what, that's what I was driving towards. I was trying to become valuable in that. I needed money to be valuable. I needed to be a, fucking, a physical force, a dominator in order to be valuable. And I needed uh, good looking women and I needed to have them dominated in order to be valuable. Like th that's where my mind was at. Everything was just a mechanism to that. And what's funny is like, as I started to attain those things, those things were empty. And so like, I was just in this rat wheel of performance like that just did nothing for like real genuine self-esteem. And so, you know, I was just gonna jump from job to job to job to job to job. That's really what was gonna end up happening, you know? And so, so up until this point, you had never been any in any legal trouble. Um, nothing like well, nothing like super crazy. Like, right. Um, you know, I got caught up as a juvenile doing um, um, there was a burglary that we did, and it was pretty much like a rite of passage. It was a bus of us hanging out. It seemed like a good idea to go break in this place and try to get some money to go buy some weed, and so we did it. And then, <laughs> basically, we got caught later on. Um. And so like we all got like probation. It was like some 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 basic stuff. But a couple of dudes like ended up going to camp, you know what I'm saying? Because I was there second time. So but nothing, nothing crazy, no felonies, nothing, nothing, nothing big and extreme. I wasn't strapped walking around, nothing like that. You know? So when um, when does when does things at the job start start um going downhill or what, you know, what was it that made you start getting into legal activity? Cause how much time did you end up serving in, in the penitentiary? 15 years. I was uh -huh. sentenced to 65 years. I was facing over 500. So like, like I told you, my quest for money was, um, was significant, you know, um, 
I ended up meeting um, meeting the person, me and her ended up, ended up dating. I met her through the bank. And, you know, she was like, you know, NBA players are getting at her because she's from the, she's from the Valley or whatever. NBA players are getting at her and actors. Are, and I just felt like, damn, OK, that kind of me, you want me kind of that makes me I'm on their status now. You know, like right. I'm competing with them and I'm sitting there selling her a whole story on. Yeah, I'm about to be a millionaire in six months as soon as I start this business and do this and that. And this boot. And so now I'm talking myself into a story. Right. <laughs> that I got to actually make steps towards. I ain't right, about to be yeah. rich in those six months working at this bank. That's out. <laughs> um, and I'm looking like I'm making like one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like I'm looking up, like I'm the manager in this place. I'm the flyest. Dude. I'm you know I'm the youngest banker in there. I'm hell fly, but like right. no, I'm not making that type of money at all. Right. So um, so because I knew people, you know, I knew the drug dealers in the community. I knew all the type of stuff. I knew what was happening for the most part. I just put my ear to the street a little more because the more broke I felt in relative relative to these dudes I'm competing with in my mind, um, the more broke I felt, the more attractive, like these criminal shortcuts seemed to look. Uh -huh. And I ain't never really been, I've always been, uh, I, hell, just not a long-term thinker. So I would take risk. I would do, <laughs> I would do things. Um, I've been shooting guns since I was 12 years old, like at shooting ranges and things like that. So that wasn't nothing crazy. And like I said, I bought into the culture. Like I knew people right. like, you knew folks. Um, and so the more broke I felt, the more I started looking around like, man, damn, these are uh, a couple of these these brothers that's that's, you know, that serving is not stronger than me. Um, right. And they seem like even easy avenues to get this money. And plus, it looks like a tough type of thing. So I talked done talked to my girl into thinking it was like a sexy thing to go and, uh, and jack some of these uh, these drug dealers. Um, so basically, so then basically you started you started uh you say robbing the drug dealers and getting bread from them. Yep, uh -huh. basically. Uh, but it didn't go like how it went in my mind. Like you know, you watch the, the movies and you just like, okay, it's gonna be a quick, easy deal. You find some suitcase full of money and then you back and you own. And that is not how that is not how it went at all. So did um, you ever have any experiences that turned out bad for you and it was basically like damn near uh, life or death situation or or you was your safety was in jeopardy or something like that. Yeah, well, certain like you start certain big time dudes that's moving like hell away. They always, you know, they around people and like they they think about that type of stuff. So like, there's certain people I couldn't get by myself. Um, right. What was funny is like when uh when they ran out when there was like no other option. That's when I started like when I started making robberies like there were towards people that were innocent. That that felt different. Like before it was like this is the game and there ain't no victim here. <laughs> you know. Right. Right, um, right. But going into this segment of people that are like running businesses or doing whatever they're doing. Like I was looking at that as like an opportunity as a lick, a shortcut. And I would justify it in my head. Like, okay, well, nobody's going to get hurt. There's insurance and all these types of things, but it didn't feel good. But I'm not a, somebody that was like in tune with my emotions and all that. I was trying to keep a mask up. So it, yeah. I just knew that it felt different. Um, and mind you, I was really legitimately trying to run a business. I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. I never took no business class or nothing like that. I didn't know what marketing and none of that type of stuff was. So I like, um, I'm like, I just got to do one good thing, plug it into the business and then everything will be all right. And it just did uh -huh. not work like that. So I'm going out there more and more and more and more. But um, yeah, like um, yeah, I've been shot at. Um, I mean, I always look back with regret because like there was one time that I was I was uh, I thought I had the jump on somebody. And they clearly had the jump on me and I just stepped right into like it felt like the dude had been. 10 feet away from me, you know, for some reason, he only pulled the trigger one time and I knew I was hit. Like there was no question about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, and, uh, but no, that didn't end up being the case. And so, that should have been my first signal to be like, knock this off, change your life, go get, <laughs> go get back into the workforce. Uh, but no, I was a uh, nearsighted. I needed a lot, uh, uh, for some reason, a bigger wake up call than that. Right. Um, now on, on some of these, on some of these robberies, uh, were you, were you, were you getting paid? Were you hitting some big licks? Were you, um, were, were you coming up on a lot of money or? No, like I, I don't, man, I, I could tell you some of the stuff. I mean, I ain't going to say it, but like, I always told myself that this guy that for some reason just did, I was not supposed to get big money like this, you know, and mind you, I was looking for like quarter million dollar lick. That's what I was looking for. You know, right. um, none of that happened, you know, um, I, I got money, but I was not being disciplined and I was running through it. Mind you, I'm trying to like keep up an image. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
So like, you know, my, my, my townhouse, like, like the way I'm living, what I'm doing, I'm eating through cash. So even if I did get something and it was like 10 grand, that 10 grand wasn't going to last no, no, no time at all, you know? Um, and so like the big money lick just was not coming within my grasp. And in my mind, I was telling myself like that, if I get a, you know the big money, like I'm done. Like I'm not trying to do this. I'm trying to be a businessman. Um, but I wasn't trying to be a businessman. Like that was a lie I was telling myself. I was just looking for an easy shortcut um, easy type of life. Um, and it just was, it was bullshit. Like I, I'm surprised I'm even alive right now. So, so at, at what point do you find yourself, um, in legal trouble? I mean, how did you get apprehended? How did you get caught up and arrested? Yeah, I got caught. I got arrested in a McDonald's drive through ordering uh two extra large fries, a 20 piece <laughs> nugget and two hot foot Sundays. Like, yeah. Um, and that's how I'd be knowing, like, you no matter how slick you think you are, like yeah. your demise come like when you ain't looking. Like, um, it's weird. Anybody, like anybody like like we can get on that, anybody, you know, can get caught up. But like, um, yeah, like I wasn't even doing nothing <laughs> this particular night. I just fit the description, which was black, white, or Hispanic, <laughs> five foot eight to six foot, 170 pounds or like 215 pounds. Like, I fit that description. Um, I the the police were were scoping out a particular area and were looking for anything that was suspicious. I was looking for something to eat. I pulled into a Taco Bell parking lot, called my girl like, "What you want from Taco Bell?" She said, "I don't want Taco Bell. I want McDonald's." I pulled across, pulled out of there, went across the street to McDonald's. But that movement, me pulling in and not doing nothing and leaving, was suspect to them. And so they pulled me over and ended up searching my car, searching my house. And one thing led to another. Next thing you know, I'm being charged with 45 counts of armed robbery across uh, three cities, maybe four. And my bail is like, it started at $3 million and it went up to $5 million. So at, at this point in time, what, you, you're 21, 22 years old? I was 20, 22 years old. So what, what what's it like, man, when they arrested you, you know, and you finally get up in court and, and you realize, man, that I'm being charged with some extremely serious stuff. Uh, how much time was you facing and how was you feeling at the time, man, being that being that young and knowing that the next how many years of your life is not, is not, uh, you know, it's not, there's no telling on what may happen. You know, your, your life is up in, up in the air right now. How's, so how are you feeling? I was hard headed, man. Like when I got arrested, um, I just believe I was going to outsmart the police. Like I'll be, I'm figuring a way out of this. Like this ain't really going to, this ain't going to stop me. You know, this ain't right. going to, this is nothing. I just got to figure this out. So even though I heard the numbers, I was like, Oh, that's stupid. Y'all are about to look stupid. Like all that's about to come off, you know, um, and that just wasn't the case. It took a while for me to like, I don't think I ever even I was watching brothers get to take get sentenced to four years and they back in the tank breaking down and shit like I never I never broke down. Like I just never accepted the reality that it was hella pressure, like, you know, but there was no. Oh, I'm done. Like never. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I was trying to figure out a way out of that, like, for instance, like. You know, once I knew that, like, OK, you know. Me just like not saying nothing to the police and things like that is not working. I'm not really finding a way out that I know of. Like, I even try to manipulate God. Like, let me go ahead and figure out how many prayers I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. let me get food. Like when I'm in, in the L.A. County Jail, let me get food to the dude that ain't got none. And hopefully that will give me some good grace with God and he'll he'll crack the doors open. Like I was trying to find every way up, up out of there. Um but ultimately, um, yeah, it was watching like my family. Uh, my mom said, OK, so I'm, I'm going to court. I'm going through the process. Navigating L.A. County Jail is taking up most of my mental brain at the time. I'm still trying to provide for my girl on the street because we got a spot together. So I'm trying I'm on the phone trying to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? My, my, I've got lawyers. My mom's are trying to help me with lawyers. They confiscated everything I got. Uh, so my, my, my mind is taken up with a lot of that, you know, um, so I was never thinking I'm done. I'm always thinking, okay, what do I got to do to find the door that's going to open to get me out? Um, wow. In that meantime, you know, I'm having conversations with dudes. I'm meeting people and I'm feeling like hella stupid now because I know what I've done, but I'm not telling, I'm not telling everybody, you know, what I've done and things like that. I'm telling people what I'm facing. Right. I'm not admitting to, you know, doing nothing. So like when I'm hearing stories about what, you know, when you got a gang of time, when you come to county jail, you already know, like, you get in the tank and you're like, okay, how much time are you looking at? I'm looking at this or what you in here for? I'm, I'm in here for this. You know, uh, that's a sub, that's a sub group. Like I'm not talking to a dude who got a county lid, like right. 
you you passing through like this is I'm, I'm, my, the people I'm kicking will be facing death penalty LWAP like this we facing like real time so we're, we're having different conversations right. and um it's a uh, um you know we're trying to give tips to each other what's happening in your court case none of us really know the law you know um all of us are hoping for a miracle and so um that's like it was through that learning like the books and things like starting to read the books and then watching what's happening to my family. Like they missed the rest of my mom. They arrested my, my, my girl. Um, those things like really affected me more than what I was actually going through. Cause and I didn't why, have no control. Why was your, why was your mother and your girl arrested in, in, in connection with something that you had going on or they was trying to get them to uh, talk about what you was, what you had going on. Yeah. They're trying to put pressure on me. Like, um, they were pissed at me. Like I did not <laughs> cooperate with the police at all. And so uh, they went and arrested her because they were, they were tapping our phone calls and like, we weren't talking about nothing that they wanted us to talk about. Um, right. And I was talking about hella like future stuff. Like, Oh, we're going to be out here. We're going to get into real estate, all this whole shit. So they got pissed off. They arrested her um, in conjunction with the case um, to squeeze on her. And they arrested my mama for the same reason. They said that my mom like was with like hiding evidence and shit, which mm. she wasn't. You know, uh, my girlfriend was doing this stuff with me, but like they didn't really have anything like that, you know, and they were strong. That like really, that really almost, almost broke me for real. My mom, so, ended up, you know, they, they let go of my mom. She was, she, you know, she got arrested and then they, you know, of course they let her go. My girlfriend, her, 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 go her ahead. family, they wanted Oh, say it again? No, go ahead. Cause that's what I was going to ask you. So what eventually happened with your, with your mom and your girlfriend? Yeah, my mom, they, um, they let her go. Uh, she bailed out, um, they put some type of misdemeanor charge. They were trying to charge her with a misdemeanor. And she just, you know, um, um, that ended up working out to where she beat that, you know, but um, in a sense, but my, my girl ended up staying in the county jail. Her parents wow. didn't want to bail her out. She was charged with almost the same counts that I had, not 45, but like 15. Uh -huh. But, um, uh, her parents didn't want to bail her out because her parents didn't want her with me. They felt like I was brainwashing her and things like that. And mm -hmm. so that they felt like, okay, we got to break up this relationship. So they, they let her stay in there. Um, right. She ended up doing, um, um, she took a deal with them um, uh, basically to like not get on the stand and help me or do nothing. But that deal was contingent upon me getting found guilty. And so she had to stay in the county jail for two years. Wow. Now yeah. I, I have a question because you mentioned that you got locked up. And you was in the L.A. County Jail. And so I asked anyone who's been in the L.A. County Jail, because I've always heard the L.A. County Jail is uh, worse than any penitentiary that they have in California. So what was your experience in the in the county jail as far as the racial tension, gang banging, all those things that relate to the county jail? Yes, it's, it's odd because like when I went in there um, at that age of 22, like not ever having that experience at all, like never been in like a juvenile hall or nothing. You know, it's a shocker. It's a mixture of the reality and my imagination being projected on the reality. You know, so when I went back down to court when I was a uh, shit, a 36, when I was getting resentenced um, not too long ago in 2019, like it um, it was the same kind of job, but it looked different, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, oh, OK, this is my imagination filter has, has been cleaned up. I'm looking at the reality of it now. So when I was young, like I'm like, this is heavy. <laughs> like You got packs of dudes. um, uh, the racial tension I'd get like introduced to like certain labels and things like that to know what, what time it was. Um, and then there was so much, it was just a lot of chaos. There's so much movement. The, the, the sheriffs are like a trip, especially you remember I was in 2006, like the sheriffs was a gang in, in and of themselves. Like, and I, so and I've, was, heard, was, I've heard a lot about that. But yeah. Like, so, you know, men's central, particularly that 2000, 3000 floor, it's, um, it's a it's a it's a lot of it's it's a culture in and of itself. So like you got to kind of like know okay these trustees got a little bit of power they can move information but you know um, you don't really know what you need to know what's going on <laughs> and and who's you know and who's what. But there's so many different faces, so much stuff moving around. You really don't know what's going on. And so you know people lace me like you know of course the blacks are gonna stick with the blacks. It's like a too black too strong type of deal. But there's a sub black groups. You know. Um, uh, you know, me being a non-affiliate, it was, um, you know, I was showing like a, like, a, like, like hella love. I wouldn't, I didn't come across as weak or nothing like that. And I had a particular type of case. So like the people that I met in one-on-one -on -one conversations, me not trying to be something I wasn't, but at the same time, I'm showing up at the workouts, you know, things like that. 
like and just talking um you know we were like i don't really have no no real problems i didn't have the burden of you know if, if my boy is from from Fodies, he got to you know when he go to court it's a different type of thing like right. there's enemies there there's just a certain like i didn't have none of that burden i just got to show up with the blacks you know that's how that's how it was like really really shown to me but like um it was annoying like i'm, I'm gonna be honest with you it was like uh you got real stuff going on. You might get off the phone with your lawyer. He's talking about, okay, you got court tomorrow. We're going to put it off for 60 days because I got to go on vacation. And you just like, dude, 60 more days up in here? And then you get off the phone and then somebody letting you know, like, hey, somebody done stole a soup from the back. Um, <laughs> and in your mind, you're like, okay. And he's like, yeah, it's looking like, you know, somebody was seen back there that was black. And now the the the, the Southern is asking, you know, who was it? And we don't want to, and it's like, you're sitting there thinking like, who, what the hell is going on? It's a damn, it's a soup for real. And so and, with so much, so, with so much going on, the cases and all that stuff, but combined with the activities in the County jail, it's just too much. You, you, like you say, you, your, your life is in the balance and these dudes is tripping on the soup. And yeah. And the soup, I mean, now mind you, we sitting here complaining about the DA the DA ain't investigating right. The DA ain't got evidence. They trying to take my life, this and that, this and this and that. They not doing the trial. It's not fair, all this. And then we're going to sit here and have somebody fighting for their life in the back of the dorm <laughs> because of a soup missing. And there was no trial. There was like no due process or nothing. Like right. the soup came up missing. The evidence was you was close to the bag. And now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now who going to run it with you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and the, the politics of it is like, OK, hey, um, you know, one of the blacks, y'all was like wrestling around or, or doing whatever. And you bumped into one of the homies, you know what I'm saying? And now, you know, the blacks got to go talk to the dudes and be like, hey, man, watch what you're doing. With the, and now it feels like, well, we don't want the Southerners telling us what to do. And it's all this tension where I'm like, I don't even know these people. <laughs> these people ain't at court with me. Let me ask you this, because I hear a lot about um the racial, the racial numbers in the LA County jail. So what was your experience like? And let me ask you, because uh, in your opinion, first and foremost, who ran the LA County jail? I, I want your honest opinion. Who ran the LA County jail as far as uh, Southerners ran it. what you saw? And so Southerners ran the LA County jail to me. Uh, I'm going to be honest break, with you. Like, break just because I've been in dorms, I've been in cells, I've been in, I've been in all of that, you know, and I know when they there and when they not there and the different types of uh, responses. So like, um, the police to, to when I was there, there's black police and all that, but the, the, the Hispanic police that was with, with them groups, like they made sure that they were straight. Um, I seen, so I seen bad moves that were happening that was in their favor prior right. to a riot that was going to take place to make sure the numbers was right. So um, and I was going to ask you that, you know, for the people who may not know, cause I know what you're talking about. Oh for yeah. The people who may not know just break that down a little bit clearly so how basically that the, the uh the shares the hispanic shares were doing things to make the hispanic numbers more more popular or bigger or yeah like um okay so you're in a dorm with 126 people you know max uh this time it was, it was east max east max didn't shut down now. but like so this ain't all the hispanic shares like i ain't saying all the shares but it don't take many for it to, right you know for for stuff to work out and so um you would just there be conversations that would take place between you know um, people get called out the dorm and there's information happening in the office and I knew this because I knew the blacks that would go to that same office you know what I'm saying where there's questions being asked we don't know you know you know who knows what's going on people getting burgers and fries who knows what's going on but I know that <laughs> every day there would be you know what I'm saying there'd be <laughs> um at, because of that you start to see movement like the next morning there'd be a bunch of bunk moves. 10 blacks would be moved into another dorm or moved out the dorm. I don't know where they end up going. And then it'd be three would come back in, three would come in, three other blacks. And then it'd be like three woods or three other Hispanics would come behind that. And you're okay, you're like, okay, that's just a regular, that's a regular move. But over time, you start to see that we originally had in the dorm, we had like 40 something blacks. And now we're dwindling them down to like 22 blacks. Right. Um, and then a riot would crack off, crack off, and it's like you. Don't, it. I was in there for three years, so you start to see the pattern of what of what the hell was going on. You know, um, you just you got racist police, you got police that's in gangs, you got all kinds of stuff, and they gonna help their homies out. Period. Right. Straight up. And so, 
um, I just know that the, the way the the way the different races run their cord, you know, were just different. You know, when, with, with blacks, we come in like brothers are still they they in their gang, even when they in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hubba Dub going to kick it, whatever, you know, brothers going to kick it. There's going to be a, a black umbrella, but it that gets shaky. You know what I'm saying? That black umbrella I've seen has really only been held together um, because of an outside threat. Right. Um, so, so let me let me ask you this, okay? Uh, by you being a non-affiliate, and you're seeing these different gangs, you know, go at it. Because where you grew up at, you said it wasn't a whole lot of gang activity. So now you you damn near got a front row seat to just to the ignorance of all this gang activity. So dude. how is it, you being a, you being a, you being a black man and you seeing these dudes go at it because you you is you're obviously intelligent, highly intelligent. So how was that? You know. What was you thinking when you seeing these dudes go at each other, you know? Yeah, I appreciate the compliment, but an intelligent person would have never robbed and did the shit that I did. I could have worked at McDonald's and made more money all this time. Like, uh, I really threw my life away for some dub. So I, I might sound intelligent, but like, it, no, uh, um, I've been investing myself now. But at the time, hell no. Um, right. I was impressed by 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 some of the stories. But like, what's crazy, like when you're sitting in there day in and day out, you're facing a gang of time. Eventually, you start to see who the who the people are under the mask. And so I had really close friends from Compton. I had close friends from all kinds of hoods. And um, like, I know what their real dreams and aspirations and, and fears were. Right. And so like when we talking and it's late and we like, man, damn, this is taking a long time. Are we going to get home? Um, brothers is missing like their kids and all kinds of stuff. And people's dying in the street. And like, so we talking on a real level. And then, you know, of course, when we move around, you know, you got to put the mask on or whatever. And so when I'm seeing, um, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the 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 things that the dudes have to do. That's just not really. I don't see where it mesh up with what's most important to them. Right. You know, it just seemed like a lot of work, a lot of work. They had and, to and know. Give us, give, us, give us a deeper a deeper example of, of what you're talking about, because like I said, you know, we got a we got a lot of um, listeners from everywhere, and they may not exactly understand what you're saying. So, like you you mentioned, you may have a homie from from a certain hood, right? So now he goes yeah. to court. And just by him being from a particular area. Yeah. He has happened? to, he has to like, for me, not affiliate for the most part, like it, it's, it's a trip being on your own. Like I know I could have friends from certain hoods, but they can't jump and have my back for nothing. So I got to be really responsible with, you know, if I'm making bets, if I'm doing all these things, I can't just run around here being an asshole. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no pack of wolves with me, you know? Right. So, but, but over time, your character kind of makes space for you. But when you're from somewhere that speaks loud for you. So if somebody show up to a tech like, man, who in here from Wooty Wham? You got to say it right. right here. You know what I'm saying? Well, I need that. You got to go over there and do that. And by I need that, I mean, I got, I need to put, we need to fight over here in this corner. Like right. th they had to, I can go into damn near any tank and I'm looking at the racial makeup. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Where the blacks at? Okay, cool. You know, they yeah. go into a tank. They look at where the blacks at. And they like, okay, where are y'all from? Okay. Okay. Cool. Cause I might have enemies over here too. You know, that is, uh, significant burden like i was able to like educate myself like i'll make a little space you know we do the work i would do it i can go in the corner for the most part and like read a book and not have to worry about nobody coming in like me being from some hood that some dude just pulled in and somebody from my hood and killed his brother and now he need to run it with like i don't have to deal with none of that right. you see what i'm saying um brothers other brothers did and so um and it's it's weird because i'll become friends with some of these people and now they fighting because they fighting a one-on-one -on -one fight based off gang shit but that's my friend now I can't yeah. watch my friend get knocked out. And so that was like a difficult dilemma for me. Um, but yeah, it was uh, when I started, when I was really, because I was educating myself in there. So I'm reading books. I'm, I'm reading Nelson Mandela, about Nelson Mandela. Um, I'm reading about Barack. Because mind you, I was in there when the whole, when Barack got elected, which was like, it was some serious shit. Mm -hmm. um, and so that I'm seeing what we doing and I'm looking at the police laughing about it um, and being entertained by it. And I'm looking at brothers, you know, lose their teeth in the fist fights and like get packed out, like fight one on one on one on one on one until they get dropped. Um, it just I just couldn't under. It wasn't for me to speak about a particular culture that I didn't really understand all the way. Like, right. Um, it goes deep. But nonetheless, I was looking at I was I was I was still seeing it and, and seeing it like, man, damn, there's so much strength that's being wasted right here. Um, and, and I was so trying to have this. Hmm? Not to, not to cut you off, but so all the fights and stuff in there, and the violence that you're speaking of, is this on an everyday, basically all yeah. day basis? Yeah, like yeah. You, I mean, I, I, you even know the sound. Like depending right. on what facility at, you know, you know the sound. Right. You hear right. that? You know the bunks is moving. You know what time it is. Like 
If you buy the TV, do not look back because you don't want to alert the, the, the police that something's going down back there. Like that's right. that's telling. You know what I'm saying? And if you in the back and you hear it, like you're going to basically get your popcorn and, and turn <laughs> and see, you know, right. oh, so-and-so getting down. Cool. Let's see what, you know, it's like, but then when somebody falls and busts their head open and now, you know, it just, it, it just seems serious. Like you hoping right. dudes right. wake up, you hoping that they wake up because all of a sudden you're like, damn, that's, that's a real youngster that could be dead right now. or have some brain damage behind a fist fight that was worth some whack ass shit. And this, right. he, he facing 40 years of life. So it goes, so Basically, in an instance, it can go from a little bit of entertainment now to, you know, the humanity in us. Because I've been in situations where that happened, too. You know, we all like to see a good fight. Like you say, we're raised from a particular area. We we have certain ideas about, you know, what men should do. And so but in a split second, it can go from a good fight to having a, a strong human concern for an individual. Like you say, someone you consider your friend. Dude, you know, um, and then all of a sudden it's like. Whatever that situation was, it just wasn't worth this. When you see the wow. blood come out of him and he like shaking on the floor and you thinking like, damn, and people are, are worried, like, should we go get help or should we like, right. it just don't seem worth it at that point in time. And and mm -hmm. then you, you thinking like, damn, and then he walking around afterwards still, you know, and then you and made it, thinking once again, sorry you, to cut you off once again, yeah. but you made, a, you made a good point in there. Like, Cause like you say, now these dudes and gotten to a good fight. You have a lot of dudes in there who holding on to that no telling mentality so now you got one of your homeboys laying on the floor shaking having a mini caesar and you have dudes who don't even want to go get help because they don't want to they don't want to be seen as a person going to get the police for anything there you go you know there you go like it just don't seem worth it and then then, then you then you're hearing too black too strong and you're like wait a damn minute is it like <laughs> is it like wow. we're not encouraging a brother will come to me and tell me like what he really wants to do with his life, like what's really going on. He dedicated to his set because that's where he grew up. It is what it is. But really, he got a passion to do something dope. And I'm like, man, damn, you need to go ahead and do that. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, maybe I don't know. And then then you realize the situation we in. We were here on the side of a bump at midnight over a spread. I'm facing 500 years. You facing LWAP. Like we should have had this conversation a long ass fucking time ago. You stressed out about, we're not even really stressed out. You looking forward to like you, he, this person is caught up in all the, the culture and expectations that he has to do on a daily basis, whether it's fight or check or rep or whatever. Um, but ultimately when, when all that shit fades, when it's late at night and who he's really thinking about who he is, he really wants to fucking like play ball or yeah. like go to school or something like travel and also shit. And it's just like, fuck. And then, then I'm watching them you know, cause I'm in there. And so you've seen the, 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 oh, I got to take a deal. Should I take that deal for 40 years? You feel me? And should right. I take that deal for 25 to life? I'm facing L. -Wop. Should I take the deal for 20? And niggas is like, man, shit, yeah. Like, don't run, roll the dice. At least you got a shot. And it's just like, it just seems like such a waste. It just seems like such a waste of talent and, um, and ability. And it just, and I don't, I didn't really see who was winning. Like, I could see the police look like they was winning. They were coming in there with entertainment. And mind you, because when I was in Wayside, I grew up in the area over here by Wayside. So a lot of the police I went to high school with. Uh -huh. So when I'm seeing them smile, I remember <laughs> the laughter of like dealing with racist jokes when I was in junior high and right. wanting to fight. And so I'm seeing these same kids grow up. These people, this is probably the, the closest interaction they've had with large groups of black people of, or any culture, really. And so they're entertained by this and they get to come in and throw handcuffs on people, bust them over the head with fast, like, and, and turn up and just dominate. And it just, I just didn't like it. I really, really did not like it. So give me, can you, can you explain to me um, an incident where you guys was caught up in a riot in there with the Hispanics and, and, and what was that like? Maybe well, there's always like some, some, some melees or something, but um, the biggest you, one. Yeah. I was going to say, if you can give us your, your, Whatever one that you remember the uh, the most that you felt was you know was really big and bad or whatever. Yeah, I mean, Ellie County Joe had a lot of um, these. Some dudes would have razors and things like that, but for the most part, it's always like fist fights and things. Like so, like none of that really shocked me. Like I've been in melees in, in high school, so like, um, but it just uh, like getting pumped up to be to be like it was weird to like be mad at somebody just because of what they look like. Because I grew up with. You know, I have friends that were Hispanic and things like that. So coming in there and it was like, okay, I got to be, I got to be able to punch somebody, just identify them as being Hispanic and, you know, 
basically go hard in the paint on them just because it was it was it was difficult to try to summon up a an anger for that. Um, you know, but there was a uh, every ride that I was in in that in that LA County jail was a, a defensive ride, I meaning that we were getting, you know, we were getting attacked in some type of way. Uh-huh. Um, the biggest one I remember um was actually I was a Mac rep at the time. For some reason, the, the you know, brothers had factions and the Mac was really like a babysitter at that time. So like there was fact and long story short, but um um I was Mac rep and a white dude came and told us he was like, look, man, they the, the Hispanics in 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 the woods, um, and the Pisces are planning on attacking y'all um this Friday. And it was like Tuesday. Mm. And um I was and like, so oh shit. Had, so oh. What, what, what were the numbers like? What was the in, in whatever dorm he was in? It made sense because like over time that number situation was happening. When I got in this dorm, it was like 50 blacks in the dorm. Okay. Like literally, I would count that child, like, okay, 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 cool. 46, cool. And um, there'd be the bad moves would happen. Like I told you, like every day people would, you know, um, and then you got people going to court and like not exactly coming back and things like that. And so like we were in child one day and I'm like, damn, we didn't, what, what's going on? And I counted, it was like 22 blacks. And I was like, man, then our lump numbers then came off. And mind you, there were certain Hispanics that got moved in that had authority. Like I could tell by just how people moved around them and what was going on that, you know, there was something different. Like people were, it seemed like there was intention behind it. So I didn't know what that pattern meant until this wood told us like, Hey, they planning on getting off on Friday. And I was like, okay, that's why all this is happening. So I counted the numbers and I'm like, shit, we about to fucking be fighting 80 people up in here. Um, I know everybody ain't going to show up, but we had some pretty tough blacks in there. And so I let the blacks know like what was going on. We spread the word to other dorms, you know, and it was just a weird ass tension because, you know, so, like you talking to other races, like shit is right. happening all, you know, you know what time it is, but now you keeping a secret and you looking for the secret in their eyes. Like, okay. Uh, during the week, like shit just started like, um, the blacks pretty much knew and it was more like a gamble. Like, are they really going to do this? You know, um, and so we were ready. We hoped that the other dorms were ready, but um, I should have did the math right. But uh, it didn't happen on Friday. It ended up happening on Thursday. Um, uh-huh. I remember I was sitting there and uh, they made an announcement, you know, in the LA County Jail, they always say radio and everybody gets quiet behind that radio, radio. And uh, there was an announcement about the newspaper not leaving the table until three o'clock. So who's making this announcement? Uh, it was South Side. It was, and it was one of the particular ones that I said got moved in there to be in a leadership role. Okay. And, um, he oh, made an announcement like announcement to his people. Okay. Made an announcement. What, yeah. He made it to the homies. You know what I'm saying? To the homies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the newspaper does not leave the table to three. Like everybody listening. And um, I ain't never heard no announcement like that before. I've been in that dorm for a little bit of, for a few months. And I'm like, mm. I was like, they they doing it today at three o'clock. And so I went and told the blacks like, hey, be ready. It, it, today is going up. And I could tell from the, after that announcement that he did, like, hey, you know, homies, the, home, the newspaper don't leave the table to three o'clock. I could see the reaction. To the rest of the Hispanics, like you can see fear, you can see people trying to amp themselves up, you can see, you know, it's just different. Right. Um, and so the blacks was ready, everybody had their shoes on. Now, like, usually three o'clock, people was like, you know, they're trying to rest and think and sleep and all that. Not us, brothers was like ready. Um, and it was just interesting to see, like, okay, how's this gonna happen? How's this gonna happen? Um, when you outnumbered like that, you're just like, I'm about to just go fucking crazy. Um, and as, and as a, a organized, you already know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm about to go as hard as I freaking can. Um, because when it's 22 blacks, I don't have to be specific about like, uh, where's my partners at? Okay. Make sure that we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's 22 of us. Shit. Uh, so we already had our plan on what we were going to do and all that. And, um, the dorm under us went up. You could hear it. And the CO was trying to get everybody stay on your racks, stay on your racks. And then, you know, the next dorm next to us went up and then you start hearing bunk start moving. Immediately, the blacks was up and moved into our position of where you're supposed to be at. Um, brothers had their shit packed. Brothers had everything. Um, you know, certain people had, like, whatever burners they can get. Um, and that's what time it was. Like, every black knew what, what was going on. Um, and uh, there was, like, a standoff for a while because they started, you know, meeting where we were at. And brothers was like, you know, brothers was not going to rush out into that. There's 22 of us. And so... We're waiting for them to like, you know, come on, you know, but we got a, we got a hard line. They try to throw apples and shit. I got hit in the neck with a fucking green apple. Somebody had a Dodger arm. <laughs> that, <laughs> if that apple would have hit me in the center, I would have dropped dead right there. Like I was shocked. That green apple was a monster. And so um, did, did, did the whites who was locked up, did they join forces with the Hispanics at that time or? Uh, yeah. 
Yep, the whites and and, and the positives. Like, I mean, they kind of had to. And it was funny because you see people that like they not trying. They trying to look like they want to get involved, but they not trying to get involved. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, uh, because they known each other in the dorm for so long, you know, it's it, this is a this is not a real human thing. Like, you don't have. There's no real enemy here. It's just you're black, and I'm it's, like, it's. And mind you, dudes have been like talking and, and things like that. So when they pulled the leaders in there to do whatever they're going to do, a lot of dudes are doing it because they have to out of fear. Right. And so you can, you can see that. You can see who, okay, this dude really wants to fight. And this other one is like really trying to look like he wants to fight, but he really don't really want no conflict. Um, and uh, um, I don't want to say it was it's fun. It wasn't, it wasn't really fun, but like uh, um, there was a clash and, you know, it, it, it did go up. The, but the when the police came, um, and it really wasn't nothing crazy. I thought I was in the, like, I was worried about getting cut and stabbed. That's what I didn't want. I was not playing on no damn green apple. I was not playing on that at all. But, uh, uh, the police came in there. It sounded like a Michael Jackson video. All you heard was like boots. Boom, 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 boom. And they brought all the toys to bear. Um, nice. and those were more, you know what I'm talking about? Those grenades right. that shake the whole room when they go off. And the, and, the, and the paintball guns and then and the spray. They were spraying it behind it. They had a fan that they were spraying pepper spray behind the fan. And it was just whipping in. Now, the wow. blacks were trying to stay. We had a barricade in the front. We didn't lay down the bunks. And we had a barricade in the front. We're not trying to run into the back of the door. That's where all the Hispanics, they ran to the back to hide from all these bombs and shit. We're not running back there because we setting ourselves up to be destroyed. <laughs> like, um, And so they bombed the dog shit out of us. Um, None of the none of the blacks that I was with got severely hurt, um, anything like that. They ended up moving us. Uh, the police like opened up the bathroom, which was big enough, and we all moved into the bathroom. And then they they locked the door to separate us, um, and we lost all our shit. Um, what was crazy about that is uh, they separated us. They finally put us in a you know over like two day period. They put us in our boxes and everything in like an empty dorm. I messed around and caught ad charges. They were they were constantly adding charges to my case. And so I followed the ride that started there. I followed it on the bus. Two black, two strong brothers beefing with the with the Hispanics and the other in, in the you know separate cages on the bus. Uh -huh. um, and I followed the riot to the LA County Jail. So it started in Wayside, which is out here in Santa Clarita, which is part of the county jail. But you bus all the way down to downtown LA, which is the other part of the county jail, which is called Men Central. And so I followed that riot all the way to Men Central, um, where it was taking place in cells. And that was. Um, that was different because you didn't know what kind of cell you're going to end up in. You might end up in a cell that's got three blacks, and two Hispanics. You might end up in a cell that's got two blacks, four Hispanics. Like you don't know what you're going to end up because some of these are six man cells. Some of these are eight man cells. Uh -huh. And um, so I just remember getting on the bus, like brothers was like, if you go into a cell and you're the only black, like do not go in that cell, go to the hole. Because right. in the middle of the night, when they say, you know, take off homies or whatever in the middle of the night, you ain't about to fight. You live in this cell. You ain't about to fight. You right. gotta sleep like then if you locked in there it, it can it can go all bad so like you said earlier you said the um the um the southern hispanics definitely run la county jail so in 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 what ways did they did they try to like um enforce certain lines made made blacks do certain things or what i mean no, how it, it, like yeah it don't work like that it ain't it ain't a direct dominant blacks just that ain't that ain't gonna work um but to me they were more involved in the systemic like administrative politic, like they were getting things their way, whereas blacks were strong, like don't get it twisted, but we weren't necessarily organized as a single unit that had administrative right. support. Even in the pen, you've seen that. Right. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, we just don't have captains and wardens like bowing down to our shit. It take, it take a lot more. Um, so what I've seen is that blacks are super strong, but a lot of times we're, we're focused on other shit. Brothers is focused on individual shit, on their own particular hood shit, getting, um, you know, getting money or whatever case may be. And it's only when, hey, there's about to be a race riot or there's some other race or tension. Now we come together as blacks to fight. Like we ain't coming together as blacks to when I was in there coming up together as blacks to gain shit. Like, right. let's get a better let's get better laundry together. Let's get better food together. Let's do some unity shit to get something. It wasn't like that. They move like that. Um, That's what I meant by running it. Like, it's not. I ain't never seen that. That's just not going to fucking happen. Like um, right. you could be in a tank with three people. The, the Southerners are not going to make blacks do shit. Um, but by the way that they organize and move, it has an indirect impact that does make us do shit. You know, like, right. 
you know, when they were in the dorm, when I was in the dorm and there were Southerners in the dorm, Blacks was more, was, was better organized, you know, paying more attention, you know, routines were different. There was just a, like a lot more respect when they moved them out. Uh, Cause the segregation, it was just, it just, uh, it got crazy. Like, um, it just wasn't as it wasn't as as disciplined, orderly. It was just fucking frustrating. And then we started fighting it, fighting each other. Like, um, right. so that, that's what that's what I mean. It's a uh, that's what I mean by by running it. You know, right. they I mean they got knives during before riots. They get knives handed to them. How the fuck? Right. So you know what I'm saying? That's, um, that's a great breakdown because I always like to ask each individual because everybody's experience in prison in the county jail is different. And so right. you know, I think a lot of times the the Hispanics. They want to hear that they run the county jail and they run certain prisons. But it's always been my experience. They, they like you say, they, they don't they, they don't run it to a point where they're trying to tell other races what to do. You know, at certain right. certain penitentiaries, they may be more organized. They uh, to me, like I say, they just, you know, they they do their own thing. The blacks do their own thing. You know, I've, I've never been in an environment where they've ever, ever even tried, you know, to tell a black what to do or do this and do that. So I think no. that sometimes a lot of people hear these YouTube stories or in these different narratives and they get a different idea. They they're definitely stronger. They're definitely more united and have bigger numbers, but, um, and they're definitely a force to be reckoned with, but they don't try to impose their will on, on, on black people. So I think a lot of no. people get that misconstrued when people say right. that. The Hispanic yeah, it, it don't work like that. Like right. not at all. Um, matter of fact, some of the best conversations I had was, you know, with the, you know, brothers from um, the Hispanic people that are coming from the shoe and all kind of shit. Like we had some good, they, 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 we get some good thing. But like I said, by them being the, such an organized whale, like there's a byproduct to when they move, it affects like the whole whole system. But there is no direct dominance. Like that's just not that's not how it goes. Especially since you know they didn't have the you know we had the, those peace accords that happened in the shoe. You know, um, the end all hostilities right. is big. Like really, really fucking big. I don't think people understand how big that is. Like, there's things and situations that happen in the pen that I was like, oh, that about, that's this about to go up. You have a black with you know a, a brother with mental health problems come out the cell and just waylay an Hispanic dude. Like, and usually that would turn to a straight full fledged riot. But people talk that down and then di you use diplomacy and it went to peace because of those um those uh, uh the end all hostilities act. Like so, to me, finally, brothers, you know, people are waking up to see that like it's not benefiting us to have a racial segregation like that to that extent in there. It ain't, it was only benefiting one group that I always saw. And that was, you know, the people that had us in there in the first place. Most, but most yeah. Um, um, County jail is a different thing than, than, than the pen. Right. Um, and so now moving on with, with your situation. So how did things end up uh, playing out for you as, as far as the things that you was charged with and, 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 and what have you? So I went to trial for the first time. I had um I went to the preliminary hearing with 45 counts of armed robbery. The judge threw out seven. I went to trial on 38. I just knew I was wrapped. They had to vote, like the jury had to vote on each count 38 times. Uh -huh. uh, I got a hung jury on every single count. Um mm -hmm. I was facing over 500 years at that time. Um so we went to trial, uh, we had to go to trial again. Um the DA withheld some evidence, so they were forced kind of in a way, like it, it benefited them though, but they ended up dropping 29 counts. The judge threw out another one and I went to trial again on eight counts of armed robbery and I got found guilty. I was sentenced to 65 years and four months um, in prison. Um, that was in 2000. I got sentenced. I got found guilty in 2008. I got sentenced in 2009. Um, caught the chain, uh, went to Lancaster reception um, for a couple months. From there, I got shot to Salinas Valley State Prison. It would be now, yard. Me, I guess it was. Stop, let me. So let me stop you right there. You said yeah. you got you got sentenced to sixty five years. You, you you're twenty two years old. So at that well, I was point, twenty five at this time. Now I spent okay. three years. Oh in yeah, that's right. You was in the county for three years. Okay. Yeah. So at that point, you're still extremely young, and now uh, the sentence is final. You know the outcome has happened. So how are you feeling at this point? You know mentally, what's what's going through your mind? Uh, well, you know, like I, like I said, it was uh, it was heavier. Like the light was getting thinner but in my mind i just went like my mom's like my, my support network was like okay the next step like we're going for appeal let's 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 do the appeal and so my mind went to okay the appeal gonna get me out right um so i always had something that i was some type of future something that i was focused on so i didn't really feel destroyed or um willing to give up like i just never gave 
them me. And I don't know if that was smart or not, but like, I was always like, this can't be, this can't be right. the it, you know? Right. So now you, um, you sent, so now you sent to Salinas. For those of you guys who don't know, Salinas is a very, um, very notorious prison. You know, the name, a lot of violence. Um, it's one of the, one of the newer 180 prisons, which is a, um, a high security design. So it's all, it's, it's always been a stigma of violence attached to, um, to Salinas Valley. So when you get there, uh, what is what what was your experience like? What what's the tension on the yard? How is you know how's everything uh, uh, popping off at the time you get there? Well, when I got there, there I guess they had just cleared that yard out and were about to reopen it. So they were br- busting people in and putting them in cells, and nobody was getting yard or day room or nothing. We was getting oh. cell fed, and you just see people getting pulled in with a property and then go to a cell. People get pulled in, and when you came out for child, like eventually they stopped the cell feeding, and we would come out the cell, and you'd walk around and get the food and um. And so, you know, you're talking to your neighbors real quick and trying to figure out what's going on. This is my first time in the pen. So I was going to level four county jail different. Like a lot of dudes I talked to never been to level four. <laughs> they didn't know what was going on. So like I'm trying to get laced and prepared. Um, I'm thinking that the pen is going to be like real black unity. And so I'm getting prepared. Like they tell me the rules like, look, level four, the people don't fight, period. You know, it's going to go. It's either a hell of respect or it's going all the way up. Um, right. Uh, you show your paperwork, all these types of things. So I'm prepared for all that, like in my mentally prepared, like to like, OK, this is where it gets more organized. I don't got to deal with all this kitty, weird, unpredictable shit. It's going to be order or it's going to be, you know, it's going to be hey, uh, uh, war pretty much. And like so um, I'm getting ready for that. You know, I'm like, OK, now it's going to be, you know, what's black is going to be the most important thing. Not where you from, not what city and all the type of shit. And then black it's going to be black at the top. And so um I'm like, mind you, I'm trying to get home. So I'm just trying to figure out what is the program so that I could, so I know what lines not to cross and hold what lines I need to hold and then get the hell home. Like, right. that's what the fuck I'm on. And so I'm ready to show paper. When I get there, I'm going to sell by myself. Um, and I'm kind of like insecure because I'm not really knowing what is, I don't know what lines mean. There's a different language in the pen than it is in the county jail. Ain't nobody saying radio, you know? Right. Um and so I'm trying to like watch and see what's going on. They started letting, because I didn't go to orientation yet, when they started running day room, they let the people that I guess didn't need to go to orientation have day room. So I'm like watching what's going on. Certain brothers would come to the door and I would ask ask questions. Like, hey, you know, I'm just not getting in for reception. They'd ask me where I'm from. Like Santa Cruz, they're like, you ain't got no homies here. <laughs> like, yeah. there ain't nobody in here. You know how that goes. Like, if you're from Long Beach, they'll be like, oh man, you got a, 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 a little Bam in, in, in 206. Like there was none of that. So I'm like, right, okay, shit. Right. Like, well, damn, were you black though? So you need anything in there? Um, I'm like, well, no, I just need to know what, what the program is. And they tell me what side of the day room was our side of the day room. They would tell me, like, I didn't know that don't walk across the line or walk across the area, walk around. Right. You know what I'm saying? So explain or, or or I'll explain that a little bit for the people watching. When you get to prison, they have this big yellow line going around the outside of the day room. And so a certain section of the day room is for the blacks. A certain section is for well the blacks and Hispanics, excuse me, the, the blacks and, and the Asians may share a side of the day room and the whites and the Hispanics may share a side. And so the, the procedure is we can't walk through their tables and stuff. So we have to if even if our cell is right by their day room, we can't walk through their table. We have to go around the yellow line and they have to go around ours. And that's really like for a, a safety precaution, I guess. You know, we don't want to person cutting through the tables acting like he's going through his cell and and stab somebody but it's a whole lot of like you say a lot of political um things and rules that got to be followed that you know we don't experience in the county jail nope you know you really need to have somebody that 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 knows how to lace you because like i was um i knew i was going to end up getting a celly and uh you know how that is like i'm praying like right. man please send somebody in your cougars being an out of like they put me in there with anybody right like it ain't and that that was the issue, you know, because a lot of times I'm you, they put you in the cell with a person that nobody wants to be in there with. Mm-hmm. Um, and he happens to be from somewhere. So you're not in the cell with one person. I'm in the cell with all 20 of your homies because right. you could do some dumb shit in here. I could whoop on you. But guess what? <laughs> now I got to fight everybody. You you know, like and they know you're right. dumb, but it don't matter. <laughs> you can't right. whoop on our dumb homie. You know, how they go. Right. So um, so I'm, I'm trying to learn as much as I can so that I don't create ne- unnecessary conflict, you know, Um and the same time I'm writing home, I'm all the way to Hell in Slings Valley. Like, like it just feels far. And then the shift was, you know, in the Southern, I'm used to just Southsiders, Pazas, 
Woods, others. I get up here and it's like Northanios and Southerners. It's new dynamics. I ain't never, I'm like, okay, what what the hell? I couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people got shaved heads and they, they stay on this side of there and these ones is like cool and whatever. So, um, and then there's like a lot more, you know, Bay Area, Crips, you know, and like, so there's that whole new element. Um, so I'm like, damn, there's more factions in here. I got, I got, I got to learn. Um, when they started opening up for day room, they were cleaning house a lot. So like, uh, I got, I ended up getting a Sully from Compton. Um, and, and so uh, when, you, and when you say uh, cleaning house, explain, you know, for, for those who are not familiar with the terminology, what does that mean? Oh yeah. Well, I guess, uh, you know, people are doing, they're doing checks on who's on the yard. And so some people have, um, they've done something wrong politically in another place or whatever, and they need to get, you know, they need to, uh, they don't want them on the yard or they need to be uh, disciplined for whatever they did. Um, and so they're like every day you already know, like somebody might come to the cell and be like, Hey, you know, we're going to yard today, but the woods are taking care of one of their own. Right. And so basically like, go get on the phone, like whatever you got to do, understand that you only gonna have a certain amount of time, you know, or, or stay out the way. So you don't get shot and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Right. You already know what time it is. So like, you just put up on game, okay? Then the next day, oh, one of, one of the others is taking care of their own. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and so, of course, and so, what, know, you, and so what he's saying, you guys, is basically um, out of respect and courtesy, if another race has an issue that they have to handle and they're going to physically discipline uh, somebody that, that hangs with them and they want them off the yard, they'll, and, and this is done for several reasons. They'll come let the blacks know, hey, man, uh, we gonna we got to take care of something today. So blacks won't necessarily look up and see four or five people fighting and, and not know what's going on and right. run over there and vice right. versa, you know, so yeah. it's, it's a bit of respect. It's a bit of, Hey, you know, this is going on, you know, so we, we, uh, can you stay clear? So it's yep. a whole lot of things that go into that. And like I say, for the most part is cause like, uh, we, with the blacks, we have, uh, individuals who, who hang with us of different hues. And so we'll yes. give, we'll give the Hispanics the same thing because they don't want to look up and see, uh, some blacks over there whooping on a light skinned black, and maybe the Hispanics mistaken for Hispanic and they run over there and it uh, uh, creates a big uh, racial riot and stuff like that. Right. So, right. Exactly. So it's like you always and that's that's one thing that was weird about um, it, it was like the level four, like as I came down the levels, the level there were certain things about level four that were predictable, even though it was really violent. Sometimes it was like you knew what was going on, though. Like right. so um, for the most part. So like uh, there was a lot of that going on. And, you know, for the most part. On, in Salinas Valley, that wouldn't really disrupt the program. You know, somebody gets stabbed, it's, it's the same race. They come, they get the weapon, it's done. They resume the yard. You know, you back to working out, doing whatever you got to do. And so it yeah. wasn't, really a, wasn't really a problem. But um, Salinas Valley was really known for taking off on the police. Uh -huh. and so a few of those things were happening. Um, did, did you ever see a police uh, uh, assaulted? I saw a police assault, but not not like a stabbing. Like they went uh -huh. to go hit somebody's cell and it was a... They had this they had this one tall brother. He was like the only black cop there. And he was tall and he was like straight out of Django. Like he was on some Samuel L. Jackson mess. And it was like, <laughs> I was like, that big old tall brother to him. Like, dude, what is wrong? What is your damn problem? Um, and two, some North Daniels got on his ass. He came in the cell like he didn't need no backup and trying to push people around. And they 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 worked him in there, uh, worked yeah. him. Um, he came out and stuff like that. But that wasn't really wasn't nothing major like he didn't get stabbed or nothing like that because he was you know they weren't even preparing to, to hit him like that but everything else i just wasn't there for i didn't see it right but like you know we, we had there was a co that got stabbed in the neck um there's 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 a lot of stuff like that going on there because you had some co's that were that were trip right right but um but I, I didn't see anything like that but i've seen a couple of like i've seen i've seen people taking care of their own a lot mm -hmm. you know where i'm just like I've seen old dudes, like a dude put pushing uh two white dudes, a young white dude pushing this old white man in a wheelchair into the building and um pushing him up to a cell. I'm thinking he's an ADA worker. The <laughs> dude go goes behind him to go slice this dude in the wheelchair's throat. And the dude in the wow. wheelchair just happened to turn his head and put his hand up at the right time, but he still got sliced up. Uh -huh. And then dude got hit with a block. And I'm like, damn, what that old man do? Like, right, so but some like caught up. Hmm? No, I was gonna say, like you say, they don't, they don't have, they don't have mercy on anybody. If, if you, no. uh, if you fall out of the good graces of whoever, man, uh, you know, it's uh, you, you, you on the line. So you say you was, you was um waiting for a good Selly. So who, I mean, or Selly, uh, Selly. Period. So who did you end up um uh, getting as a Selly, and how did that turn out? I got a dude from Compton um um as my Selly. 
which was cool. He was funny as a motherfucker. We, we, was, we, we was having fun in there. He, he was starting his term out too, so he wasn't transferring. He was coming in without nothing too. Uh, he, he had a, like a 10 year term or something like that. And we, we got along well, but only problem with that was he wasn't really able to like really lace me. He'd been to the pen before, but not on no level four. Uh -huh. And so he introduced me to a couple of his homies, which, which was cool because some of them were cool. Um, but like they were having to lace me on stuff, you know, because he wasn't really lacing me with, you know, what was going on. Like, you know, keeping your shoes on in the cell, like trying to, you know, keeping a lock, lock on the door, um, like all this type of shit, you know, um, right. he, he liked it like that. Cause he really, to be honest with you, he didn't want no homies in the cell with him, no brothers, because he couldn't relax. Like you, <laughs> he's right. like, well, I'm here with another field. I can like kick back, relax. And I ain't gotta be shit, you know, but if you got, you know, I ain't gotta feed you. I ain't gotta do all the type of shit, but if you got somebody from your, from your hood and from your set in there, like th that's eyes on you all the time. And so right. like, he would tell me <laughs> these things in privacy, but shit, you know? Um, and so they were like, they like the fact that I, you know, I worked out all the time and things like that. And so they're like, you know, we feel like you got the homies back. So screw it. Like, right. you know, usually, so, they, usually they want him to be in the cell with somebody else from Compton, you know? Right. And and that's how it is. A lot of times uh, in prison, people want you have, well, actually you have a lot of individuals who prefer to be in a cell with one of their homies um, in the event, something, ha you know, jumps off because I I've seen situations where you may have a, you know, it may be two crips. And you have a dude in, in there in the cell from a uh, cell A, I mean from gang A, and a dude in there with gang B, and, and they get into it in the yard, and you thinking you're cool. And actually, that happened with me. You know, uh, we got got into a little melee on the yard in my own celly, who happened to be from another area. He uh, he rushed me, so that's why Ooh, sometimes yeah. people prefer to be in the cell with their own uh, people from their own gang. So yeah, um, Hell did, yeah. You, did you see a lot of black on black violence up there? Any any melees or? Uh, not, no, not, not, uh, not black, not, not, nothing beyond like a one-on-one, -on -one. like dudes would go in the cell and sometimes they'd have to, you know, like maybe not a debt, but there's some disrespect over there on the chess table or some peanut, you know how it is. Right, right. And so they, they, they do some one-on-one -on -one stuff, but nothing, nothing major, um, that I seen, like there was no, nothing like that. Um, so you had mentioned to me one time that, uh, the blacks end up getting into a riot with, uh, the Northerners. And I'm, I'm asked this a lot, you know, because it goes back in history where we used to have the blacks used to have a pretty good rapport and, and in some in institutions, uh, an alliance with the, uh, with the Northeños. But now due to, you know, I would honestly, I'm gonna honestly keep it real. I would say due to a lot more of the less blacks being structured, you have sometimes they go over the line. Um, and so that sometimes causes, um, you know, friction, you know. Um, yeah. And so and I would see that mind, too. If you don't, if you don't mind breakdown or, you know, what happened when, when the blacks got into it with the Northerners. Yeah. Cause there'd be stuff that would happen in the day room. You got, you know, you got certain brothers that just is not feeling, um, just not feeling the way sharing the shower with Nathaniel's and things like that. Like you try to get to the shower and this and that, like damn the politics, the fact that we share the shower and it's one of them, one of us, all type of shit. They just rush to get in the shower. Like same thing with the phones. And so I would see little things like that that were disrespectful that I was like, damn, if a Nathaniel did that, it'd be some shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But what ended up happening is we were locked down and um, we got a call from the one, uh, from the 180 or um, that was letting us know we were about to come up like the next day. I think we got a call before the few days before the porters were bringing the message around that um that there was tension with the Northanios on the 180. Some had happened with 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 the group of blacks and and all that. And so when we were coming up, brothers was like supposed to be aware that there might be some tension going on, you know. But you know how it is when you've been down for like I think we were on lockdown for at least a month. There might have been a couple months. So brothers were trying to get their canteen, all kind of shit. This first day, it was like let's go get it. Uh, so people were focused on the tension, but people were still trying to program. So it was um it was a top tier day room, and I was on the bottom mm -hmm. tier. And um, I remember the alarm went off and I remember I jumped off the bunk to go look because um, I was like, I already heard about the tension. So I'm like, OK, what's going on? Um, and I saw all the male police and everybody run out the building and they were going to building one. We were in building two. So everybody in there, I was thinking that it's going up in building one, too. I'm like, uh -huh. well, OK, there it is. Um, during that time, they, all they left was uh, it was one uh, woman as a CEO, a big old woman, too, not athletic at all, left her in there. And um, there was a black talking on the door, you know, and he's talking, on the door. you know, you people supposed to be down, but like brothers, just, what, what just wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And a Northaniel came and started, I don't know if he was stabbing him or, or just punching him or doing whatever, but that's how it started. 
And mind you, it's like the, the ratio was at least at least two to one. There's probably like 12 North Angels in the day room, maybe, maybe. And there's probably like 30 to 40 blacks. And that's what kicked it off in our in our dorm mm -hmm. uh, or in our in our building. And so all the blacks that was in the day room that wasn't locked in their cell just rushed all the North Daniels and the North Daniels was trying to fight. And it was just it was just ugly. Um, them there, like there's so many people that was that was strapped that was that had burned like it, it was just ugly. And then the, the the woman CO couldn't do nothing. She spray pepper spray in the air. She couldn't do nothing. The tower is shooting a block gun to no avail. Um, it's just going up. And so you just have a bunch of blacks on the window. I just remember looking because I'm on the window too. You just have a bunch of blacks on the window looking at what's going on. Uh -huh. And um, you know, one Northanio, um, Northanios went to the hospital for sure, but one Northanio died in the day room. They tried to revive him, but if they couldn't, he got stabbed too many times. Mm, wow. Yeah. And, and so after that situation, I'm sure they had you guys on lockdown quite a while and, and all that stuff. How did how did that Basically work? Forever. Like, uh, they was on lockdown so long. I transferred out of there on like everybody was trying to get up out of there. Uh what your annual would just come up. Like we was that, that place was down for over a year just because of that. Uh -huh. Um, I remember being back in Lancaster and, and asking about it because people would be coming from Salinas and I'd be like, No, is they still on lockdown? Yep. Damn, for real. Yep. Um they really didn't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. They did not know what to do with that. Um, and they would come up and it would still go down. Like I remember I was there waiting for the transfer and, you know, they try to do it. You know, they'll try to release like five, four sales. Right. As soon as they get out there and go up again. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah th things, things like that. For those of you guys who may not know, th things like that can literally uh, continue on in small increments. Like he says, every time they release, they release people to the yard literally for years, you know, years and years, you know, that stuff like that can, you know, can trickle down and people are continuing to fight for years and years. And so what was your experience though? Like, like you say, as a non-affiliate, did you, cause people always ask me how, it, how is it for non-affiliates? And, you know, first and foremost, I want to say that everybody's experience is different, you know, um, Sad to say, sometimes we as black people, we trip on other individuals who are not part of gangs. Uh, sometimes yeah. we're not. But it has a lot to do with how that particular individual carries itself. But sometimes that individual could be upstanding and, and doing all the things right. And you still have somebody that that wants to bother him because they know yeah. he don't have that he don't he don't have the number. You know, like you say, it's one person yeah. can't can't whoop 15 or 20 people. So how was yeah. your experience as a person who wasn't in the game? Um, well, you know, I had a lot of. Um... Um, I did feel like there, there was hella pressure. Like I had, I had to let, I had to let certain things slide that I got in my own self. I'd be like, okay, this is worth me going for. And, and this ain't. And right. so there'd be like, there might be a slight comment. I wouldn't bite on every single thing because in my mind, I'm like, you ain't really did no damage with that. You just, you just snap and, and really, you don't really get no points for doing that. You know what I'm saying? With me. Um, and, and one quick question. And you feel sometimes these comments were made because they knew that you didn't have as many homeboys as they did to back them or stuff like that. For sure. Like I got in a fight um, in the um, uh, in L.A. County Jail. This dude was hella disrespectful between me and, and, and some bunks, me and having a conversation with somebody else. And um, I just lost it. Um, he said something like. Like he was he was being disrespectful, saying some stuff. And I was like, bro, like, really, you don't even live back here. Like your bunk ain't even back here. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to be talking like that, like you can go somewhere else. He's being disrespectful to somebody that I was actually talking with, too. Like I just, It was just getting on my nerves. And, and, and uh, really quick, he, he turned to me one one last time. And just to let the people know, you're, you're no little dude, right? No, no. At the time, and I, I was bigger than I am now. Like I, at the time, um, well, at this time, I'd lost weight. But when I came into the county, I was 210 pounds. I'm six foot. Like, and I'm hitting the bars like crap. I'm doing sets of like 20 pull ups, 25 pull ups, like dipping in. Like, it's just, you, it's not going to be no flawless victory. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to lose, but somebody, like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing some type of damage. And I'm like, and, and I was just cool. Like, I'm not, I'm not an asshole. I'm not none of that. Like, I'm hanging out. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, I ain't like, like hanging like that. But I mean, like, I'm cool. I'm not trying to be somebody I ain't. So it's like, right. you know, you know, what's really up? And ain't nobody got no guns here. Like, you know, um, shit. Right. So, like this dude, I've been in jail for like four months, maybe, and like um, I got transferred this like after the riot, and my mom got arrested, my girl got arrested. I'm just like not doing good at all. I'm on, I'm, I've been lost hella weight, and um, me and this dude in the back of the dorm is talking, and this dude is doing a workout in between us, and the dude is saying like something like, "Oh my, my, I wouldn't mind my." He's an older crip. My, he was like, "I wouldn't mind my wife working up, working as one of these um these jailers." 
it'd be good money and she just sitting there all day and that dude would get up he's like you can't trust a bitch she'd be out there she'd be sucking all these cops dick and this and that. i'm like what the fuck and I'm, but i'm not gonna say nothing dude gonna defend himself um right. he's like hey man i trust my wife like she'd be good it's good money this and that worry about it. he's like nah you these bitches this and that and i'm like bro come on man like you don't even know us you, yeah. you you get in the conversation ain't got nothing to do with you like man so like if you're gonna talk like that like man go work somewhere else because this is where we this is where we living at right here and he, he got up and looked at me and like got all in my face and was like man if you're sensitive get on your rack that was the first punch to me uh-huh <laughs> so i just you know um, but lo and behold, he was from somewhere. And so, um, you know, that was the first question. Like one of his homies came over there and was like, well, what happened? This and that, we'll do it. Oh, I just got in the fight with this and that. Man, hell no. And they looked at me like, man, where are you from? And I was like, it's like, damn, <laughs> you know, if I had the right answer to that question, it wouldn't go to where it went, <laughs> right. you know? But, um, yeah, they, um, I ended did up they, like, did they damn. try to jump you up in there or? No, they, they tried to like uh he swung on me and then the dude I just fought, like he started to try to swing on me and I just you know came through the monk because I know how many people was in this dorm from their group. Right. And I'm like, even if I cause I probably could have fought handle, like you know, been in there with both of them for a little while, but eventually they all gonna come back here and I'm in the back, it's over with. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. let me go ahead and slide up to the front. And then they all came up there and they talked to me up there. Um, and it was like uh it's funny because they they like it was just some weird shit. They were mad because I then you know then whooped on the dude, and it wasn't supposed to take place like that. You can't just get off on somebody like that. I'm like, all right, whatever, whatever. They took my food um, that whole night because my dorm was in the back. I'm thinking, I'm thinking they gonna. I made like a little burner out this pencil. This I'm thinking they gonna come in the middle of the night and try to finish some shit off, and they didn't. The Bloods came and gave me a gave me some food and, and this and that because they saw what had happened. And then um, I, mean, I told you I was in the cells with one-on-one dudes that I didn't really know who they were, but we were just, we got cool. And so one of them got transferred in that dorm when he saw me, he's like, oh man, what's up? What's going on, man? We were chopping it up and talking. I was like, man, what's going on with your kids? What's going on with court? This and that, whoop whoop And he's like, uh, uh, yeah, man, this and that and the other. And then he's like, yeah, the homies are telling me like, like, like um, you know, there's some skinny non affiliate dude that just got off on one of the homies in here and this and that and this and that. I'm like, damn, I didn't even know he was the story was so twisted that I didn't even know he, that it was me. Like, right. I'm like, damn, I was, I was like, I've been in here. I don't even remember that. <laughs> he's like yeah this happened like a couple weeks ago i'm like damn i don't even remember nothing like that then it then it dawned on me i'm like man they talking about me man yeah and he knew from the story he knew me because we was in the cell together we was busting down and doing all kind of shit like he knew like that that, that, that was wasn't, fucked up. That, that wasn't you yeah so he went and hollered at them and they came like they apologized to me because they knew that dude was like out of pocket and um, you know I, i've said that many times before on uh a lot of my uh lot of my stories and stuff you know first and foremost your reputation and, and your character, a person's character goes a long way. So um, if they see you programming and doing a certain way, I, I, I mean, uh, programming a certain way, and then you may get into it, a person will say, well, no, man, that's that's not it's, that's not him. I know that dude, man. And it has to be right. more more to the story. And then secondly, I speak on too. if a person, if you stick up for your stand up for yourself, it's always going to be some more brothers who will come to your aid and support you, you know, in some yep. way, shape or fashion. So, you know, yeah. you said the bloods came and they gave you a little support, looked, yep. looked out and gave you uh, some food. They done as much as they could do. Right. With the fact of you not being a blood. And I'm pretty Straight sure there's probably some of them who wanted to go fight for you too, but they know that in certain lines, they really can't cross politically. But they there still want to support you because at the end of the day, you know, we're all black. And I've had that happen in there uh, times before, too. You know, where still you have dudes from other factions. They'll, you know, they'll they'll support you because at the end of the day, when they're talking, like you say, we're talking, we're relating to each other. And we develop bonds regardless of where individuals are from. Straight up, you know, and uh, and that, that was like the really like there is so much potential in that because there's just hella potential. Um yeah, so like um just for the for the most part, like like you said, the character stuff, like um that always made room for me. Always, you know. Um I would sit there and really try to use like whatever knowledge I had. Cause like, you know, being in there, I didn't realize how much opportunity I had from where I grew up. Like I thought I was like a poor kid surrounded by all these wealthy kids, this and that, this and that. So when I get in there, I'm like realizing that damn, I kind of like I really fucked up. I should have grasped a lot of those opportunities. I was really on some dumb, stupid shit. Like some of these people had, had to do some of the shit. I didn't have to do none of this, you know? Um, and so there's a lot of shame involved. And so like, I would use whatever knowledge I had to, to, to help. I'd be in the community like that. Like, let's try to solve this problem. Like, like tell me what's going on. Like, let's try to figure it out. You know, um, I was, I was with that. And then like, even when, you know, over time, 
you know, you've been in there for so long, you have rapport with certain officers where you could actually quell some shit. Like you could solve a problem just through diplomacy that way, you know? Yeah. Um, and so like I was part of the community in that way, big time. And so um, I didn't really have, like I said, anytime I went somewhere new, I'd always like, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, let me go hit the workout pile. Let me just let it be known that like, I'm not, you know, I ain't weak, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then the conversations I would have, you know, you just, it's just a way of being that lets it be known. Like, okay, one, you face the gang of time and, one, you know, you have something to offer and just you just happen to not be game, man. OK, cool. It is what it is. And I would just know what battles, you know, really matter. Like one of my, my biggest one of my biggest issues was. um, um, I got in a cell fight with another not affiliate in, in, in Lancaster. Um, shit, you know, and I had to, I had to go to board and, and explain that. That's man. I was like, this is crazy. Pepper spray and all the whole nine because over something dumb and I, in my mind I'm like well you know we've been you know there's some disrespect going on and so we just gonna punch on each other a little bit until we get the respect back that's not what that person was thinking um and so, so was, you know, was, this in, was this individual your celly uh can you can yeah. you break it down a little bit for us more yeah he's my celly um how did that how did that uh how did that you know how did that come about the altercation yeah, yeah I get I get to Lancaster now I'm like okay I done lost my appeal I lost my appeal in Salinas and now I'm like really trying to um, some brothers that I met in Lancaster. There's a lot of LWOPs there and things like that. So like they was um, they were lacing me on like taking advantage of the college classes there because they were free. And like I told you, I don't like effort. You know, I was like, Ugh. I've been reading some books, but I, like all the the school shit was coming up for me, and like I didn't really have no out, so I just did it. I messed around, got an A. I took one class, but I got an A in that class, and that shattered a lot of shit for me. I'm like, cool, like. It opened the door for some potential that I, so like I, I dove into college big time after that and um so i had to sell by myself which you know is hard to get right <laughs> that is hard to get i did not have a bottom bunk chrono which means that i'm entitled to be on the bottom bunk which actually kind of makes me anchor the cell right so um i was just basically going off the grace of the officer who was like okay you ain't been really causing no problems so i'm gonna like Unless I have to get that cell, I'm gonna come at you. But I need you to get a celly. You can't stand there by yourself. Uh -huh. And so I had to try to go find a celly that was somebody that was gonna like, you know, program the same way I was programming. Because I'm trying to get out. I'm telling this dude, I'm like, look, they done sent me to 65 years. I'm not doing 65 fucking years. I don't give yeah. a damn. You know, like I got to. Um, um, I was reading the title 15, and I saw the uh, recommendations of like 1170. Um, I, I, I was thinking about maybe trying to get a part. I was trying to. Uh, computation of sins, like whatever it was, I knew that I didn't want no crazy shit on my jacket. <laughs> I gotta try to get up out of here. I was writing to try to, I was writing curb, trying to get bills passed and all kinds of stuff for the gun enhancement because all my time was gun enhancements. Um, so I was really on this tip, and so I found a celly that was going to college too. He seemed like he was on that same tip. I'm like, look, bro, look, people in, in Lancaster, people do not hold on the phones that long. You got to, you have to have a cell phone, and nobody even knows. Like the person that gave that that you sold it to transfer the next day, like or, or that you got it from, like if anybody knew you had a cell phone, chances are you're gonna get caught. So I told him I said, look, we can't, I'm not no, we ain't trying to do no cell phones, no nothing. I'm trying to like, I'm really trying to push to get the spotlight on us because I feel like if somebody had the, I had all this faith that if the world saw this, that they, they was giving us too much time and they'll let us out. I was like, really, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that type of shit. He was like, all right, cool. You know, we're going to program like that. We're going to do the school shit and whatever the case may be because our points are going to drop. We're going to end up transferring anyway. All right, right. cool. And so you let him know all, like, you let them know all this before he even moves in here. Like, this is this is how I'm trying to program. I'm trying to stay out the way. So I, yeah. I want to tell you who, who's, who's living is basically in correlation with what I'm doing. There we go. Because um, I done learned over time now, like, like having different cellies, I learned like, okay, this is the agreements you have to have before you come into a space with somebody because it's hard okay. to get out. Right. You know? yeah. So I like, you know, over time I learned that lesson. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and I knew what I had to offer before I was like, okay, they're just throwing me in a cell. I'm just like a non affiliate. Like, let me go ahead and try to fit in. Like now I'm realizing no oh, shit, me being like a non affiliate and the dude that I am, the character that I bring, I'm a bomb ass Sally. Like right. I'm clean. I got my own shit. Like there's benefits to having me in the cell with you. So now I'm leveraging that. I'm like, look, bro, Most I'm off you the opportunity. Yeah. To be in the cell with me. You know what I'm saying? And this is kind of what like what I'm looking for in return. And I think we could we could job. And we did. Cool. All right, cool. We come and sell. This dude, all of a sudden now, he need to talk to his granny and he need to rent the cell phone. And I'm like, bro, we done talked about this and everything. Like, he's like, I'll take the case, this and that, woo-dee-woo, blah, 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 blah. 
uh, and basically I bent a little like, all right, you know, I don't want to, I ain't trying to use it or whatever case. And you said you're going to take the case and this and that. Cause I had the whole sob story. He's like, I can't call my granny. She's old. I can't call her from the phone to collect. I got it. So I bent, which I, I regret that brother ended up buying the phone. Uh -huh. Um, so now like I'm not using it, but like, you know how it is. Your cellie got a phone. Like you, you shit. You got a phone. <laughs> damn, you you right. hearing every damn word that's going on? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then he asked like, "Do you want to talk to somebody?" And like, I'm like, "No," because really, I didn't have nobody. Like, uh, you know, my, my, I was on some bunny and concept with my girl. Um. So when I went to prison, I didn't have no big ass network of people. A lot of people didn't know I was robbing and shit like that. I didn't have, you know, I wasn't putting myself into the street like that. Uh -huh. Um. So and I'm not calling my mama because my mama done got arrested behind a phone call. I'm not about to shit. I'm not about to bring her into nothing. So it's all collect call for me. Right. Um, but I can hear everything he got going on. And now, like when he on the phone, I'm like listening for the pull. I'm listening for keys and shit. Like, man, yeah. they, they, they walk in, they walk. Well, uh, but one morning that got on his damn nerves. Um, um, I went to the gate and I said something. I'm like, oh man, they walking on the on C section or whatever, or A section. He's like, Man, I see him, I see him. I'm like, all right, cool. And I, me cool. So we were cool together. So I thought I was joking. I was like, I just don't want to be butt naked in the shower coughing. I thought it was a joke. Yeah. Um, he held on to that from that morning. He held on to that shit all the way to the evening. I don't went to visit everything, not even knowing that that done pissed him off. And so he started fucking with me that night when I was reading and shit like that. I'm on the bottom bunk. He putting his feet like damn near on my shoulder and shit. And because we were cool, I'm thinking that he just doing some absent minded shit right there. Um, so I'm like, I'm gracing him out. Um, but he was actually trying to pick a fight with me. So he started doing a whole bunch of other shit, like standing real close to me and you know, I asked him, like, what the, what, you know, what, what, what's going on? He'd be like, what, what, what you talking about? Like, just acting like weird as fuck. And to the point where I was like, oh, fuck. So I pretty much told him, like, bro, you can't talk to me like that. Like, that's not going to work, you know? Um, and that, that shit escalated into, like, me saying, fuck it. Just put your shoes on, man. Let's just go ahead and do this. Because I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. You just acting funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, let's just. In my mind, I'm not trying to kill nobody. And I'm not thinking you're trying to kill me. But we we both men. And I'm, I'm thinking these same stupid ass rules. I'm like, we just going to get some understanding. Right. And so, you know, we get to fighting slash wrestling and the fucking light comes on and um, I can see the police running up the stairs. So I'm telling him like, hey, man, let's just, you know, cool it off. The police is coming. We can, you know, when they leave, we get it back on. And this dude start going berserker barrage. I'm like, oh, shit. He throwing. <laughs> he trying to he trying to get us fucked over in this. Um, the police come talk about stop fighting. I'm like, man, come on. And they pepper sprayed the dog shit out of us. Um, and we ended up coming out the cell and, and, and this and that. And, and I ended up losing that cell, getting put in there with somebody else because nobody wanted to be in the cell with him. And what's funny is he didn't even get caught with the phone because uh, <laughs> until later on, because there was so much pepper spray in the, in the, in the, in the cell that they didn't even right. come in here. Right. So that was my, that was my, my, uh, my first 115. Um, and I just felt like fucking what sucked was like all the police were like trying to tell me like, oh, man, you got him and this and that because his face was a little messed up. And they're like, you know, you won this and that, this and that. But I didn't feel like a winner at all. I'm like, fuck, I done fucked off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The um, Damn, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the spotlight on me to get out. Right. And for the people who don't know, man, ain't that the worst when you in the cell with somebody, you thinking you cool because you, we're in this small confined space. And then all of a sudden this dude go to acting funny. Or for whatever reason. And a lot of people don't know, man. Sometimes it could be he could get off the phone, have have a bad phone call. He ain't got no mail in a week. Uh, he, got, he get a letter. His girl, his girl don't want to be with him no more. It's a trip, man, to be in such a small space. You, yeah. you and your celly been cool. And this dude yep. just go to acting weird. It, it's, it's a it's a it's a weird vibe because now you really can't go nowhere. You know, you got to deal with this no. dude. It just a, a lot of people don't understand how. Um, how annoying and troubling that is, you know, because now you might down there, you having butterflies in your stomach, like, damn, am, am I gonna have to whoop this dude? I'm trying Man. to get out of the way. And it's just, yeah, it's it's uh I definitely it's know weird. the feeling. Yeah, I definitely it's know. Weird. I done slept with I didn't have the with mental health problems. I done slept with like basically a burner, like a makeshift burner, because I'm like, I don't know, because the culture is like you can't even talk about it. Like right. I can ask, like, hey, man, you cool? Oh, yeah, I'm straight. And it's like, damn, we can't even have like an honest conversation about what the fuck is going on. And so I'm here trying to read your mind. And so I'm trying to act like, OK, we are cool. But every time you move, I'm thinking this fool about to get like hell attention. You can't walk away right? because <laughs> you locked in there. You're like, right. this. And so I don't know all that. And so uh, what's funny is like later on, um, 
he ended up telling me because we're still in the same yard. He ended up telling me later on, he's like, man, I don't want you to think I'm an asshole. But remember earlier that morning when you had said A, B, and C, like that kind of bothered me. And I looked at him, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Bruh. But but because I called him out, he felt like, okay, fuck, now I have to fight because he called me out. It was a bunch of rules that was just stupid. Like we should just we basically threw away some shit that was important to both of us because one, he felt like you mad, and so I'm just gonna basically irritate you to get you back for what you said early, early that morning without talking to you about what you said. So I don't know what the fuck is going on. And I'm thinking, okay, this dude is being disrespectful to me. And my only avenue of recourse is to let him know that I'm a force to be reckoned with, which was dumb. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, and then by me calling him out, he felt like, well, shit, I can't turn down a fade. And so all this shit culminated in us having covered his, I, I felt like I was on the fryer. That's how much pepper spray I had on me. You couldn't yeah. tell me I wasn't on the skillet. <laughs> um, what's, what's and, uh, like getting hit with all that? All that pepper dude, spray. like, first off, it took all the oxygen out of the room. Um, so you feel like you suffocate, like straight up, because the police is taking forever to put for you know they open that slot up for you to put your hands behind so they can cuff you. Right, like that is taking a cool minute. Um, and so I'm trying to calm my mind now because I'm not getting enough oxygen at all. I like low key want to lay on the floor and get to that crack in the bottom of the door to right. get the oxygen out. But I'm like, let me just be cool. Let me just be cool. Fuck it. And they finally get me out and they threw me in the shower and my stupid behind, I went right to try to wash all the pepper spray off because I got it all over my body. Like it's like literally dripping down my whole body. Um, and it felt good when the cold water is hitting you. But the minute you stepped out the cold water and the air hits you, the flames hit you. Right. <laughs> like, so I'm like, shit. Um, it was, it, I was burning so bad. I was like, there's no way you can tell me that my flesh ain't falling off my body. Like, and then you look at it and it, your flesh look normal. And you're like, this is some weird psychological. This is pain. It was so much pain. I ain't gonna lie. I was telling the officers like, something's wrong. Like pepper spray ain't supposed to be doing this. Like, right, right. Something is wrong. And it, it's yeah. dripping all down like my genitals, everything. I'm like, I'm, fuck. Yeah, and I'm still I, trying I, to play hard. Cause you know, you come in. It's, it's like 9.30 at night, so they're walking us down. So I know all the people I know in the yard is looking out. So I'm still trying to be, like, in my drawers, like, hey, you know what I'm saying, um, or whatever. I think I might have pants on still at that time, but I'm still trying to, you know, like, keep a strong face. But I'm, like, low-key, like, cooking. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, the lieutenant gets us in the room. What happened? And we ain't saying shit. Okay, y'all ain't going to talk. What, you know, um, it was all that dumb old shit. Uh, yeah. we, signed the, we signed the chrono saying that we weren't going to have any further, you know, issues or whatever. Um, and then they sent him to go find a cell because they knew I was in that cell first, but nobody wanted to take him. And then it was like, all right, Johnson, like, look, you either both going to the hole or you got to find a new cell. I'm like, man, damn. Like, so I went and found another cell. And that night I was just, I was roasting really for the next couple of days because you know how I go. Like, it right. don't, whew. Um, every time you hop in the water, it's just like it it uh intensifies mm -hmm. it. It kicks it back up again. Yeah, I, I had a similar experience, man. And, uh, I, you know, yeah, the, the stuff, like you say, um, I was tripping on how you was talking about how you had to literally calm yourself down, and that's yeah. what I had to do to myself. Because if if you if you allow yourself to panic, and I and I was literally thinking this at the time, I was like, man, a person with asthma, you can die from that stuff. You, yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, it it takes your breath away, and then you you can't breathe. So it's only natural to want air. You know, sometimes you you may or you may not be handcuffed, your hands behind your back. So yeah, yeah. it's definitely a um you know a, a cold experience. It is. And mind you, you've been you've been fighting. So like you you really you sucking in air. And yeah. so I knew I just did the calculus. I didn't see the I didn't see enough cell extractions. I didn't see how it goes. They're not. If I flip out in here, they're just going to take longer. And so I was like, look, we're underwater and we're just about to. It was just some mental mental shit. I was mm -hmm. like, let me just wait. Right. Um, and so, so that's how that so went down. Now I'm like, man, damn, I got this. I got this one fifteen now. That's just lingering. Um, and I didn't understand it. Like, really, I thought I was, I thought I had more self-control than that. I was like, damn, I just did some really dumbass shit. Um, and so yeah, that, that was that was that was one conflict I had with a brother. Um, I was trying to learn my best, like really, like when you you know, pick my battles in a way that was like, okay, um, am I moving out of fear right now or wisdom? I didn't yeah. like to move out of fear because I still wanted to feel like, you know. Like a man, really, to be honest with you, like, you know, I'm holding my own in here. But wisdom was something different. Like sometimes I got to like, OK, I'm not going to bite on that because that's that's I'm not going to give them control over me to that extent. But the same time, I got to hold I got to hold a line or else I feel like everybody's going to feed on me. And, and so 
um, that that was like a real dilemma. So I was trying to learn every time I get a bad, terrible selling. I'm like, oh my god, I have to wait it out and, to and get a sell move. And that's what I wanted to ask you on because earlier you had mentioned that sometimes you know you had to pick your battles, and sometimes to you by by you basically being a lone wolf, sometimes yeah. you had to you had to walk away from certain situations where where you knew that. If it was just you and him or you had that many homies, you wouldn't walk away or the dude wouldn't, you know, we feel that he wouldn't say that to me. Um, if, 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 if the, if the, if the, uh, if the playing field was even. So, and then you mentioned earlier, like how we grew up in a certain area where we era, where we have certain um, expectations of our, of ourselves as men. So how right. did that feel sometimes happen to, you know, feeling like, man, if this dude didn't have 20 homies on the yard, I'd smash him. But he does, so I gotta, I gotta take this route. How did, how did that make you feel? Oh, dude, it was, um, it pushed me to my breaking point a lot of times. Like I literally be in the cell, like thinking, "Fuck it," you know, um, it's gonna, it's worth it, you know. Like this dude, I just cannot take the level of disrespect no more. Um, and I had to figure out, like, am I tripping? Because it's like some mental stuff. Like, am I tripping? Am I being too sensitive about some shit? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. um, and uh. And then you don't want to tell. I don't want to go run to his homies and be like, hey, man, that dude is like, you know, he'd be an asshole in the cell. They're going to be like, you know, so like what's funny is like I, I didn't had a celly one time where um, I'm just like I'm being patient because all I knew was red and green. I didn't do yellow well. I'm not going to sit here and talk shit all day and nothing like that. Like we either going to fight or do whatever we're going to do or we're just going to be at peace. Like I just was not good at yellow. And so um, he was just getting on my nerves like like a lot. And um I just raged for a second. I was like punching the bump hard. And I, you know, I got off my off 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 my bed. I was like, dude, you was like, you were you were trying me. And he was like, cool. That's right. I needed to see that. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> so now, now, now there was like hella peace in the cell because he wanted to make sure that that was in me. And I'm like, dude, don't be so that's that's what he literally said. Yeah, this dude had issues. Like, yeah, he had. If we would have gotten a fight in there and and if he would have killed me, they would have sent him to the counselor's office because, oh, he had an episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this brother was he just did not have what was going on. And I came off the bus into the cell with him. And so I was like, fuck, I got to find a way to get up out of here. Um, um, But yeah, like he he did. He did. Um, he was he was just trying me like he was really testing me. And he had a reputation for being like kind of like a lunatic a little bit. And so he felt like he do that. And he had like he like hella numbers. Um, right. out there. Like I always think back on like how I could have did that differently, you know, but um, like I said, I didn't know yellow. Like I didn't, that, that seemed like a weird game to play. Like I'm going to talk real angry at you and just show you that I got strength and some type of like, like shake the bushes type of shit and not do nothing. Like that just wasn't how I'd function in life. Right. Like, if I'm, if I'm a, you know, if I was going to come off the bunk and be like, Hey man, what the fuck? Like I'm coming off because it's going to go <laughs> like, yeah. you know? And so he guess he took my peace my peace and calmness and like, you know, uh, patience, like as a sign of like a weakness or something like that. He just, right. He want to make sure he wasn't in the cell with somebody that was like weak. And I'm like, bro, that ain't the way to go for that. Cause you don't even, he didn't even know the thoughts that was running through my head. I'm like, I'm about to throw my whole life away. <laughs> on this brother. Shit. And then mind you, what's worse than that is he had, he was on a level four cause he had a, like hella points, but he only had like seven years. Yeah. So that that was bothering me, like, bro, you don't even, you're not even in the realm of of, and mind you, you ain't got to go to board or nothing. You just got to, you can do what the fuck you want, and they, they gonna open the door. You know how it is. If you got to go to board, it's different. Like whatever right. I do, I'm gonna explain. Right. Um, and um, at the time, I wasn't even going to board. I just had 65 years. They didn't want to. I wanted a chance to go to board. I didn't even have that chance yet. And so I was really trying not to fuck off what I thought might happen between now and 65 years. I knew that something might change. And uh -huh. older brothers would always tell me, like, brother, laws change. Like, you know, like, you, you never know. You're not going to do that 65. You're not going to do that 65. And so for this dude to only have seven years to be, you know, uh, acting the way he was acting was like, like, that was bothering the shit out of me. Um, yeah. And so it was hard. And I, at times I'd ask myself, like, am I being weak right now? Or am I being wise? Am I being fearful? Or am I being wise? Um, and so, you know, I survived that. The um. <laughs> And, you know, earlier, earlier you had mentioned, you had mentioned, and I wanted to touch on that a little bit. You had mentioned um, about the mask, which, you know, you said it and then, you know, you went, you kept going. And, and like I say, by me doing time, I know exactly what you were talking about. But but for a lot of my viewers, they don't understand 
And it's crazy that you bring it up that a lot of these gang members and stuff, a lot of us, we all had masks, but everybody with a mask on wasn't necessarily about that life. And like you said, but you, but but by uh, the, the celly that you had, who who he saw you as being patient, being being, you know, being kind. He took that for something different. So and, and it's sad that sometimes that's how it, it is in prison, man. We judge individuals on the way they act and not necessarily who they really are. And, right. and and so since you didn't walk around, you know, maybe tattooed all up, sagging, acting like a gang member, he felt that he could take certain liberties with you that he may not have took with another individual just because, right. you, you know, you didn't you didn't have this certain mask about yourself. And like yes. I said, sometimes it's sad how, you know, with, with the brothers in there, how we will pray on our own just because yes. he carries himself in a way that's different than, than, you know, the average person in there. Yeah. Um, and I like as the more time I did, the more like I started getting involved in groups, especially when I got to Soledad, you know, I was like really, really a thinker now, like really thinking about stuff and and maturing. And I always wanted to make room for dudes to be like who they are, like so they didn't have to deal with that type of pressure because I realized how much the community was missing out on behind these masks and these, you know, like there's certain brothers like, OK, like he might not be great at playing ball. Like he might not gamble, he might not like do drugs or nothing like that. But that brother know how to like write. He might be really good at some legal shit, and like the community needs that. But because of him not showing up in ways that are traditionally, you know, valued, it's like okay, um, we just gonna make him feel like shit and like make sure that he's that he's small or whatever the case may be. And Bruce gonna like use him to make themselves feel big or whatever the case may be, and shut that whole thing down instead of embracing it, bringing it into the community and being like, dude. Like you add value in this particular type of way. Like I always was really considerate about that, just because I knew how how I had to how I had to walk through stuff. But like I said, a, a lot of it was my imagination when I first got in there. There was a lot of good dudes around me that had I just reached out or been more receptive to, that I probably didn't have to suffer all those mental things that I was dealing with. Right. But because I bought into an idea that said like. Oh, don't reveal this. Make sure your mask seems strong. Like, make sure you look and appear strong and show up strong and these types of things. Like, I was doing that because I bought into that. I wasn't able to tap into all the shit that was really around me. You know, it took me a while to really be able to tap into that. Like, once I realized, oh, these are just people, you know, because, you know, the tattoos and, and the way we, we 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 show up and what we say and things like that, like, b b people believe the performance. Right. <laughs> it's a damn good performance. Your shit, and he here, like shit. You 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 here with you know you beat the death penalty. You got air wop, and like we done heard that you done did you know you done knocked out whoopie wham, and you done did all this, thing. and then now, now you here like tripping and doing all this stuff, and it's like okay. Um, and when I was young, that shit mattered. You know, when I got older, I was like, that's like a that's a grown man throwing a tantrum. Yeah, like that's not wisdom. Um, and, and sometimes in, in many instances, it's nothing more than like you said, a performance or a scare tactic. You know, in my opinion. Uh, everybody who acts like they really don't care, I would say you m might have 10 or 15 percent of people who really don't. A lot of those individuals, they're just playing a role. They want to be accepted and they're doing yep. what they feel has to be uh, done as a gang member. You know, you have to yep. you have to project a certain image or you're going to get tested, you know. So yeah. um, so so moving along, man, you you um you fortunately didn't have to serve all that time. So what ended up transpiring in your situation that got you back in court uh, early? It's funny. Cause like I'm, I'm sitting here. Um, I was writing to curb cause they sent me 65 years. out all these gun enhancements. I was writing to terms to curb saying like, I want to create an amendment to this bill or to this, uh, to this law that says that like, you know, we get a chance to go in our 25th year. I was asking for 25. I thought that was a cool shot in the midst of me doing all that. Somebody gets to me and says, Hey man, they got a youth offender law. To where, you know, if you were um, 18 or under at the time of the crime, you know, then you get to go to board with all this type of shit. And it, and they got one coming right after that to where if you was tw uh, under 23, you'll be good. And I'm like, OK, word, you know, like, let me see it. Let me read it. Um, that bill ended up passing like, oh, the 18 and under one already passed. But this right. new one was was in effect. That's what it was. The new one was in effect and it passed. Like I read it and like 30 days later, it actually passed. And I was like, oh, shit. And brothers was like, dude, you're going to like because I didn't have a life sentence at 65 years flat or 65 years and four months with no L, um, even though it felt like shit, <laughs> it felt like life. But uh, um, but I, I was eligible to go to board my 15th year. Now, now I, at the time, I've been down 10 years 
And so I was like, okay, I got to walk off half of what I just did. Um, and so I knew I had a cushion. I had a cushion. I had to go to board. Um, I had a chance to go to board. So I started studying board. Now, what's great is before that, I was already going to lifers groups. I was doing all kinds of shit. Um, and so that was um, when I actually ended up going to board, they, they realized, okay, it wasn't because of, not to say that the board really, you know, but it wasn't because of this law change that you started changing. Like you right. were already working on stuff before that. Like I already got a couple of AA degrees. Like I was already there, you know? And so um, that, that was, that was a benefit. Um, that five years felt long though. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but I tr- ended up transferring shortly after that. I went up transferring to, uh, to solid at prison and uh, continuing the education, continuing the groups and things like that, which was, this was a completely different dynamic because you've been on level two. Right. Have you? Yeah. And, and like, it's packed full of people. It's night. It's night and day from a level four. And, and in a whole lot of ways, I prefer the level four or at least the level three to a level two, right. you know, but yes, but, in order, you know, in, in order to um, especially when you have to go see the board, the board likes to see us on lower levels because it shows yep. that we're, we're programming, we're staying out of trouble and that there's different ch- ch- challenges on a lower level. And so they like to think that we can navigate our way back in society when we're because when you're on the level three or level four, you're in a cell. So you're basically um, you're away from everybody. And that's not a that's not a, a problem solving method. And it's it's not it's not um it's basically just it's not it's it's not always something that you can do once you're in the street. You can't just go lock yourself away from everybody. It's not an anger management dealing uh, a dealing tool. So they want us to be around different individuals like we would in a normal society, so we can learn yeah. how to navigate our way through you know through through uh through problems and stuff. And so um. The bad part about the level two, like you say, it, it's it's no privacy. Um, it's dorm living. You got everybody right there. So yeah, it's definitely it's definitely different from 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 being in the cell. Yeah, because of my sense, like I couldn't go down to level one, and the level twos I can only pick from level twos that were cell living. Uh huh. And so that's why that's how I ended up in Solidad. And oh, so okay. even in, even in that cell, first of all, right? Yeah, the cells were smaller. Right. But there was hella movement and dudes were like, I, I didn't realize on the level four and level three, the level four I was on turned to level three while I was there. So like I was in the same place. So you have a hell of space around you. Like, I didn't realize how much space we gave to to each other. When I got on level two, it's like people were right up in your space. And I was yeah. like, OK, this feels like way different. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it here. Uh, people actually bump into you and don't say nothing sometimes. And you're like, what right. in the hell is going on? Because um, dudes have such short time. and You got people mixed you got dudes that are doing super short time that never been on a level four. And then you got dudes that have been doing hella time that work their way down to a level two. And it's like, I can only relate to one group, you know, but there was so much programming and so much opportunity. It was almost too much program. You remember, you used to a lockdown every once in a while. Like we, we up right. and then you down and then you up and then you down. And so to be up for so long with that much movement, I was like exhausted for a while. Uh-huh. Um, it took a while for me to adapt. Right. And so, so you know, eventually, eventually, because before before these laws that had came into play, you were going to have to do a vast majority of that sixty five years, right? Yeah, I was, I was going to be um, I'd have been paroled at the age of seventy eight. Wow! If, if, and so, if the and so landed, yeah, the, those new laws, those youth of, uh, youth offender laws, which were extremely instrumental in me me coming home as well, they made an allowance for you after doing a certain amount of time to go to the board. Because before you didn't have to go to the board, so go to the board no. and be considered for an early, a early, a early release. And like you say, what, what was very, right. very fortunate for you is you saw that for whatever reason, it was, it was, it, it was in your best interest to educate yourself in prison. And I seen where, yeah. um, an individual, he got into that same, he was in, under that same circumstance, except since he had, since he had time to do, he wasn't, he wasn't trying to educate himself. And so when that law passed and he was able to go to the board early of course, they denied him because he had been he had been, uh, you know, he had been messing up his, his whole entire state, you know. Right. And yeah. So- it's, it's unfortunate. That's why I really want to. Um, like the system, I really don't like, you know, I'm an abolitionist at, at heart. Like I want to reimagine this because the system is not success. It does not. It's not even designed to get results that are beneficial to the community at all. And so I, I understood like I knew a lot of brothers that were like that. They're like, what's I felt it in myself. Like, what, what am I really doing this for? It's just I was so hard headed and did not want to let go of my life like that. 
the I really wanted vengeance. I felt hella stupid that that's why I was like, I'm going to get up out of here. But I could totally see somebody looking at the paperwork. They looking at older homies. They looking at people in the yard that that is that's them in the future. And they're like, man, this is my life. I'm not about to do nothing extra that I don't want to do. I totally got that. So I know that that law caught him off guard. I was just fortunate enough to have mentors around me that was like, look, dude, being stupid and not doing nothing and just going to yard and not doing shit is not cool. We're not about to give you no high fives or praise for that. Like, and, come up in this discussion. Like, and tell I me. Like, like, yeah. Articulate I, yourself. Like, I, that, I, that I, like that. I was like that myself, you know, by me having life. I was one of those individuals that, man, I got life. I'm not going nowhere. So uh, why should I go to this job or why should I go over here and do this? You know, and so in the end, it, it really hampered me way more than it helped me you know because right. when it was time when they did start letting lifers go i wasn't prepared so i had to postpone going to the board several times you know i i possibly could have been home five six years earlier so you know yeah. you was i applaud you for you know for for taking that that um that that initial step towards you know correction and and, and seeking knowledge being in prison because with so many negative influences in prison it's very it's very hard to do you know then on top of being sentenced to a lot of times we don't always see the light at the end of the tunnel man so not at all uh, eventually all. What, so eventually what happened you was able to go to the to the board and, and be found suitable for early release yeah and that was crazy before that like i've been doing so much um just in the in the you know in the community of the prison pretty much um that i got recommended i was a counselor's clerk and smoking like i got recommended for 1170d um, they did a full investigation on me and all that. And pretty much the secretary of CDCR sent a letter to my judge and was like, he don't need to be in prison no more. Like consider him for resentencing, which is pretty much saying like, he'd be asked to the community if you let him go. So I go down, like only 126 people got this at the time. Like, I was one of the first people, it was, it was early. And um, now a bunch more dudes are getting it. But um, so I go down to the court, my family, like I'm gone. This is what I'm thinking, I'm out of here. Um, it was my 14th year. Um, I get down to the court and... Um, Long story short, the judge is my, my whole family. I got friends that then came out the woodwork and all this people that I knew in the pen that then went home. They didn't show up. And uh, the judge was like, uh, you know, I see the benefit in I see I recognize that you, you know, you've done a couple things or whatever. But um, the D.A. was really arguing against it, like really showcasing all my crimes and things like that. And he was like, these crimes are heinous. And basically this is what I'm going to do. You know, and he took 22 years off my case. He resentenced me to 43 years, which hmm. I was going to board in a year. So I'm like. This don't really, it was the weirdest feeling. Now, mind you, I went down there. There was two other dudes that I knew that got that same thing. And so after my court date, I go back and um, I'm like, man, shit, I'm going back to the pen. Like in the same exact situation I was in before, really, you know, like. Um, and so it was like a shocker. Uh, those two were going home. So like literally we were going to the bus and they went to the they went to the exit to leave to go home from the prison, you know, to, and, and then I was catching a bus. Go catch a check. Like it was a, it was a terrible feeling, terrible yeah. feeling for real. Um, but I'm glad for it in a certain way. Looking back, is because they would have just let me out. Like there's a couple things I need to unlock in my head still. And by having the pressure of going to board to explain my shit, like why I did what I did, it forced me to like really get to some root things, which actually helped me out now. But nonetheless, that hurt. Like that was a, I was humbled significantly at, at that but yeah i did i'm going to board a year later well COVID hit so it actually put it off so i went down to court in november of 2019 i was actually supposed to go to board in april of 2020 but COVID hit and they pushed my court my 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 uh my board date back to like to january of 2021 i went to board january 26 2021 got found suitable um hope the governor didn't take it and i i finally got released may 7th of 2021 so wow, yeah. man, that's that's you know that's definitely remarkable. And and as you said, had all had all these laws not have came into place, you still would be in prison to this day, right? You said you so you was due to get you was due to get released when you were how old? Seventy eight. Wow, wow, man, yeah. that's definitely most definitely a blessing, man. And Heck yeah. So how was it, you know? When, once you heard the because I, I know what, what the process is like going to see the parole board and stuff. So how was it when they came back and told you that you were being found suitable? And so oh, shit. How, how did you how, how did that feel? Oh, dude, like. um, Oh, dude, like tears were falling the, the whole nine. Like it was so much work up to that point. Um, Yeah, like tears were falling. Um, 
even the CEO to hug me. He was he was moved by everything that was taking place. <laughs> It was crazy. It was such a such a blessing. I couldn't. I was walking back down the uh, the corridor, and it didn't feel real. Like my hands and my feet didn't feel like they were mine. And um, I got to the phone to tell my mom, and she's crying, and like it was just elation of a of a, of a whole other level. You know, I'm seeing you know certain brothers. It was COVID during this time, so I couldn't see everybody I wanted to see, but like um, seeing certain people, and I'm telling them what's going on. And I could see, I could see their happiness, and I could see their fear, and I could. Some of them were eager to know, like, okay, like, give me some information that would help me. You know, like, there was all these things, and it just felt like I had passed. Um, I couldn't relax all the way, but I had, I had achieved, I had reached a certain point where it was like about to be a little bit of downhill from there, and uh, it, it felt, it felt good to have them acknowledge a lot of the effort. Um, that even though it was just words, it was like words with an understanding of self. Um. That it was, it was, it felt good to have them acknowledge that effort, you know. Right, and 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 Real so time. when that day finally comes, man, after doing all that time, and they release you, you you walk out. Uh, what was that like? <sighs> Shit. First of all, I'm laughing because my um my homeboy sent me some skinny jeans. That's for <laughs> <laughs> like, the dudes I went to junior high with. They was like my mom's like surrogate son because my mom only had one kid. And so when they got the dress house, they sent me these these skinny jeans. And I'll tell you right now, I didn't get I look like Spider-Man coming up out of there. I, this this stuff was so tight that I had to point my toe to get the pants <laughs> on. And I didn't give a damn. Yeah. I didn't give a damn. I wore them things with hella pride because I'm walking up out of here. Like it you, felt do you so still dirty. got them? Yeah, I, got, I ain't worn them. <laughs> I, got, I got them. They did my honorary, you know what I'm saying? Right. They, they, <laughs> Yeah, I can't get rid of the things. Shoot, yeah. uh, feet looking big, all that. I was like, "Damn, how is this the thing?" Um, but uh, I looked like I was gonna save the day. Like if somebody would have said, "Like man, dude, help!" I would have, yeah. and I would have saved the day. But uh, um, yeah, I was like hella elated. It was crazy to just sit in the car by mom's and she's driving, and we driving down the coast, and it was weird because I felt like everybody was like, I thought everybody knew, like that man just got out of prison right now. Look at him. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was the shit. You know, uh, seeing the colors and like, it's still surreal, dude. I, I'll be and you got out in twenty eighteen. Like, I st I'll be on the freeway sometimes. Like, motherfucker, you was driving a car on the freeway right now. Yeah. <laughs> a year ago, you was in a cell. Um, yeah, it's great. It's great. So um, so, and it was great. What 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 like were some of the smaller things, man, that you enjoy, you know, that that we sometimes take for granted or don't even realize how important they are to us until uh, they get taken away from us. I know, like for me, I was, you know, I was I had a few things I wanted to get out and get some fruit, some make uh, I mean, some McDonald's French fries and stuff like that. What are some of the oh, smaller bro, things that you enjoy, man, uh, once you was released? Um just like not having to explain myself I didn't, I didn't realize that you know like i ain't got to ask to like go use the restroom or nothing like that or you know like um in the public space like um but honestly one of the things i really appreciated which was weird to me i didn't really get it is like women and the amount of effort that, that it's really like art like i went to a couple events you know i've seen dudes but like uh, some of the some of the women the way they they were styling their hair and 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 and, and doing themselves up was like a, like art and I really actually like appreciated like uh, just the uniqueness of the designs and the, and the effort. Like I was like, damn, that's kind of crazy. Cause you know, we're we were at everybody showing up looking the same, you know, the CEOs, you know, the women's right. CEOs looking, they looking the same. And so I was like, damn, you know, I was, I was noticing like details like that, like hair and things like that. I also, what I also appreciated was um, like closing the door, like privacy. There's no window in the door. You go into the bathroom and close the door. There's no curtain that you pull in <laughs> to separate you from your celly. It's a door. Like, I like that uh, the showers being in the shower by yourself, really, you know, like I had that on level four, but it's through the great gate and all that. There's that. Um, like you said, the food. Um, um, oh, and weights going to the gym like. With for real weights is, is, is a big deal for me. And then also the stars, like I know it's, it sounds kind of weird, but like even though we had night yard, like, they have them big old like lights on. And yeah. So. We can see the moon sometime, but like being able to like see the stars for real is 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 great. Um, there's there's so many little things that are still happening for me now. Like um, 
just being able to go to the store with like with money and get what you want, like not having to wait for no package, you know? Right. right. You know, I definitely, um, I definitely, I definitely can relate to all those things, you know, just just being free, man. We don't really realize how precious um, our freedom is until it's, it's uh, you know, until it's taken away from us. And, and now we have to, uh, you know, the smallest things are, are, of our lives is being controlled and being managed. You know, like you say, we can't go to the bathroom or or we can't do this or can't do that. You know, so it's definitely, man, freedom is definitely a blessing, you know. And so uh, it is. It, we was glad just to meet you, man, and see that you, you know, you're making the best of, of this second opportunity that you've been given and enjoying life, man. And uh, you know, like I say, I definitely can sympathize and empathize with you because I was in that position myself. Yeah. I, I appreciate I appreciate you, man. I appreciate all that too. And I appreciate you um like reaching back and creating this particular platform to get to the to to the real of certain situations and not just glorify stuff, but like really, you know, talk about it all, you know. Right. Um that that's because a lot of brothers don't have a voice out there and you know and then when they do have a voice or they do have a platform the only thing that people really want to hear from them is confirmation of what they already are imagining they don't necessarily right. want to hear the real so i appreciate you doing that man um you turning your second life that's all we really got a lot of people don't get a chance to rebuild their life you know whatever baggage we got we get a second chance of like okay who am i going to be in the world and um it's it's a it's a responsibility but it's also a privilege so you know um i see you doing that um, and you being innovative and, and entrepreneurial in how you're doing this is, is is amazing. And it sets the tone, especially since you did like damn near a quarter century in there. Right. You know, um, that's great. You're taking it by the reins. So I appreciate this opportunity, man. I really do. Hey, and I thank you, man. I thank you for just coming on here, you know, sharing your story with me and everybody who are tuned in. I appreciate that, too, man. Hopefully or well, I already know, not hopefully you're definitely going to be an inspiration to people out there, you know. And um, like I say, man, I was glad to have you. Um, thank you once again, man. Any anything that you want to say before we uh we get up out of here? Um, man. Um, ah, oh, man. What do I want to say? Like, it's people. Um, whether we're whether we're in prison or whatever the case, it's 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 we're all people. You know, um, I would encourage people to look through the performances that people are making and realize that no matter where a person is at, no matter what a person has done. They have dreams, they have fears, they long to be valued by a group. And if we recognize that, we can make adjustments and re we could react differently and not encourage somebody to continue to treat themselves as if they're not a person, as if they're not human, as if they are the mask that they're wearing. It does, it does nobody any good. Um, if we can get the courage to speak to people behind the mask, to the actual person, um, then I think we could just make some significant changes where we don't have to be learning these lessons at 30 something years old um people don't have to do this amount of time like there doesn't have to be this much loss um i'll just encourage that like no matter how somebody is performing or showing up they are a person under all that and speak to the person <laughs> best believe they're gonna feel it all That's right most definitely saying. most definitely man and thank you for those words of wisdom you know thank you for coming on like i say once again um you guys y'all already know what it is man is we got chris you got your boy 16 in life. Y'all resume normal program. That's right. <laughs> All right, bro. I'll see you later. All right. Most definitely. All right. In broadcast. In broadcast.